Or that. One sec. Oh, heartburn is killing me. Oh, fuck it. There we go. How is everybody's whatever? If you're, uh, if you're American, how is your whatever? If you're, if you're, uh, just American in, de in denial, um, because the rest of you are American too, whether you know it or not yet. We're working on it. We're working on it. Uh, <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm the most in denial American Canadian yep, God damn Canadians Fucking Canuckians I swear I swear to a Baby bald eagle In a, in a NASCAR oh, let's see. Hang on. Get some of this shit rearranged Oh, I'm tired. I'm fucking tired, y'all. Oh, and I can't. I can't do this. This is this is bad for me. I, I can't use my armrests in this chair now. Um, I'm having some mild shoulder impingement. Uh, so I have to. Uh, <coughs> sorry about that. Um, got to start rehabbing the shoulders a little bit. It's it's just a process. It's just a process. You work on one thing, something else gets unbalanced, you rebalance that, you fucking work on something else, something else gets unbalanced, you rebalance that. So it's a fucking process. Um, <clears throat> I hope my voice holds. I don't think I'm going to do as much theory reading as I thought I, as I wanted to. Um, oh, f good luck with her. Uh, I was good, went to the countryside to see family in a part of Kansas that actually has woods, lakes, and low hills. Uh, went to my sister's for Thanksgiving. Grandparents couldn't make it due to medical issues. Most pleasant Thanksgiving I did in a while. Uh, yeah, I didn't do anything. <clears throat> I, didn't, I didn't do anything. <laughs> uh, my folks ended up going on like a mini vacation, so... I regained control of my house for a while. It was pleasant. Um, but, yeah, I didn't do anything. Uh, I did... Um, I did spend a fair amount of money. <laughs> Not on Thanksgiving, but uh, across the board, yeah. Uh, got myself, um, or, well, it will... Um, New mat uh, new mattress is finally coming. I finally ordered it. Um, sh company out of Chicago, small business. Uh, they make um, latex ma mattresses. Um, they hand make everything in their factory. Um, you know, the the natural latex has to be imported as a raw product, of course. Um, but yeah, um, organic wool, organic cotton. And natural latex. Uh, those are the three ingredients in my mattress. Um, so, yeah. Um, I didn't do either of the, any of that, boss. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I I have a thing with like I sleep on natural latex. It's it's better across the board. It's a longer lifespan too. Um, but yeah, I did that. Um, yeah, caboose. Yeah, it stays cooler. Um, also, I got a home gym. I got a home gym. I, I broke down. It's going to be here in a week or two. Um, something like that. Should be here next week or the week after. Um, it'll come via freight. 
um, and it's going in the garage. So, yep, I'm I'm one of those guys now. I'm I'm gonna have like a home gym in my garage. I've I've decided that, uh, yeah, I'm kind of just going full gym bro on it. I don't care. Um, twenty pounds. Twenty pounds. I saw one of my longest running, my longest running doctor, uh, today. Um, he's a specialist, but you know, he keeps an eye on me, um, and just across the board. And I, you know, they weighed me in on his calibrated scale that I've been using for years and years and years now. Um, and it was official. I've put on twenty pounds. Minus, like, I did the math. It was, like, minus 2, 2.4-ish for clothes, accoutrement, and the food that was in my gut. So, I've put on roughly 20 pounds of fucking muscle this this year. Yeah. Uh, the testosterone has been a fucking godsend. You know? It's... It, it's, it's done the work. It's put in... I've put in the work, but the testosterone is legitimately helped along. I wish I had done it years ago. I wish I had done it like a decade ago. I wish I had done it 15 plus years ago, quite frankly. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, yeah, I wish I, when I was like 25, yeah, 24, 25, just go full fucking gym bro on it and just, Yeah. Would have been fun. Um, but, yeah, it's coming along. It's coming along. Uh, like I said, the shoulders are mildly impinged. I'm going to have to work. Um, I'm going to have to work on that. Caboose, we're working on it. You're working on it. We're working on it. So, beefcake now. I mean, it's coming along, Zippy. It's coming along. Um, probably not easily with her at your age. Not at your age. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even recommend fucking around with it, right? Like, even, like, I would never recommend fucking around with it. Cover my ass legally, blah, blah, blah. Seek the prescription of a doctor. If you are fucking, you know, hypo hypogonadal, then you can get supplementation. But sub 25, it, it's kind of, it, fucking around with testosterone can get a little fucky. Um, Yeah. Uh, Exol, 100%. It not only limits it, it shuts it, com shuts it off basically completely. Um, uh, some sense, it, it's just a series of balancing exercises I need to do. It's not a matter of like stretching. Usually it's a matter of, um, rebalancing the muscles. It's a matter of strengthening the muscles rather than stretching out and like getting some distance. Usually there's already distance, but in one direction that it shouldn't be. Um, hey Cassie, um, and Exel to answer your question, uh, is it true that taking tea limits your own natural tea production? No, it, it completely shuts it down. Um, it's a binary switch. Um, when the, uh, I think the, uh, LU cells, um, sense that there's enough testosterone based for, uh, your individual homeostatic, uh, levels, um, the HPA axis shuts it down. Um. Hypothalamus pituitary adrenal uh, axis. Um, it just shuts down production of testosterone in uh, in the testicles. Just so yeah. Um, there are ways to trick that, by the way. There are ways to turn it back on. Um, but oh, cat, fuck that. Um. Yeah, I said hypogonadal. You, to, to, to get some with it, you'd have to be hypo. Um, fair enough, class. Uh, cat, I'm just I'm just working on rehabbing the shoulders now. I'm I'm sensing mild impingement, so 
I'm going to add those exercises in now and rebalance the shoulders. It's like a, it's like a, an old used car. It's like an old used car. You're like, ah, you know what? Fucking, I'm going to, I'm going to throw a new pair, a new pair of tires on the car, you know? Right. And all of a sudden you notice that you're like, oh shit, shit's unbalanced. Right. And you, you rebalance the wheels, you get that all sorted and you go to press the brakes and they fucking squeak. And you're like, oh, for fuck's sake, I need to change the brake pads. And you change the brake pads, but while you're in there, you use a little degreaser. And now all of a sudden there's a fucking, right. It's like that. It's like that. Like trying to fix an old beat up used car. Every fucking time you, you, you fix one thing, there's another aspect of it that just completely, you're like, oh, going to have to work on that now too. So. Oh, cat don't, I mean, cat, cat, you know, you can't just ignore it. Oh. <laughs> You're describing my car. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. <laughs> Cracks. Uh, so, yeah. Home gym will be here in a couple weeks. I'll be able to use that and start making, like, some proper games, maybe. Um, but yeah, it's sort of, I, I, like I said, I spent, I spent a little too much money between the mattress and the home gym. Yeah. Uh, shouldn't have, but you know, the home gym will pay for itself in not having to go for, go to a gym unto itself. Right. Like that'll, that'll, that'll pay for itself in like a month and a week. Honestly, with the kind of gyms and the kind of services and the kind of shit I get into, that'll pay for itself in like two months. So, yeah, and the mattress has been a long time coming. I already replaced, the, I already built a new bed in my bedroom. So now I just need to put a mattress on it. So, yeah. Well, I mean, it won't pay for itself, but it will, um, it definitely will amortize well. It'll last for 10 plus years. Um, realistically, it may be the last mattress I buy. <laughs> like, realistically, um, yeah. If, if all goes well, I should be able to get 20, 25 years out of it. And like, yeah. Um, you need space for stretching and shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's useful. Um, I, um, yeah, I'm going to put the, I'm going to put the, uh, the gym in, um, the spare car port slot. Cause I have a three car garage, right? I've got a double and then a single and I use the double. Um, for the SUV for the Highlander. Um, and then I'll, I'm going to put that in the single slot. So I'm, I'm literally going to be one of those, those like dude bros that like, if you, if like in the summer months, like the do garage door is going to be out open and I'm just going to be fucking sitting there. Yeah. Look at my future. Um, <laughs> Having a home gym is okay. Own the means of gains. Be part of the Swolitariat. <laughs> and cat based. Oh, uh, thank you for this. Uh, mobility work is a bitch when you can't be mobile. Funny how that works. Be sure to grunt loudly. Uh, some sense I've started getting into that recently. When I did my, my new, um, my new personal bests two weeks ago, right? When I was, when I went for like a high like a, a record mark, <laughs> right? It helps. It helps. It helps. It helps. I don't know what the fuck it, it's, it's, there's something animalistic about us. It helps. Uh, you dropped some idiocy in memes. <laughs> oh, 
J.R.R. Swolkin. If you're not grunting, you're not lifting or being explosive enough. Um, yeah. Yeah, and the, the fucking forearms like this, this right here. It's not even forearm, right? Yes, yeah, I mean, whatever the fuck this is. Fucking let me, anatomy of the arm. What am I looking at here? Okay, so I would, yeah, would inside, outside, wrap down, around. So that's the extensor carpi ulnaris. Okay. Extensor carpi ulnaris muscle. That's, that's yeah, this. Coming down the side right there. Yeah. Um, interesting. Just like to know what the fuck it's called sometimes. Um. Flared up for me when I got the first wrist injury in the left arm. Um. Uh. Oh, do you have any tips for tendonitis? My forearms are getting super stiff. From, uh, Pencil? From like tablet for this or typing or all of the above. <laughs> Keyboard in bad posture. Oh, well, <laughs> you're going to hate what I'm about to say then. <laughs> um, one. Hey, Crimson, knock it off with the bad posture, right? Like that's step number one. You, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta knock that off. Um, so, st you know, step, th st start there. Um, is that... Yeah, that's that territory. Um, yeah, that's um, extensor muscles. Hold on. Oh, that. Sit up, sit up straight, flat ta uh, flat surface, that sort of thing. Straighten your arm out fully. Uh, wrist should like extend out. Push the palm down with the opposite hand, uh, that sort of thing. Do that for 15, um, 15 seconds per, uh, per side. Do that three times a day. Um, then the reverse, right? So that way, pull back. That way, push forward, that sort of thing. Um, also, um, yeah, it's... If you have a weight, like even if you have like a thick can of like a heavy can of like canned beans or something, um, forearm. Right? Yeah, you need to, you need to rehab that forearm and that's going to involve a whole lot of wrist. Like Kat said, like, uh, I was, was fucking basically spend time extending his fingers and such after gaming and BJJ uh, sessions. Not sure how much it helped, but he swore by it. Yeah, you need to, you need to start getting that re-engaged. You need to just rehab it, whether that's with rubber bands or just a can of fucking beans or something. But yeah, you need to get it stretched both directions and watch your posture and also you need to kind of, you know, get that sort of action going. So good luck. Um, <sighs> Rev. Yeah. Um, 
<sighs> ah! Oh, right there. Right fucking there. Oh! Oh! Oh, did I just find a sore spot? Holy shit, y'all. <laughs> oh, that was a thing. Oh, put my put my thumb right on that, didn't I? Oh. oh. Yeah, just yeah, oh, oh, yep, yeah, right. Right there. Right there. Oh. I mean, <clears throat> a good portion of what I do, um, Zippy, uh, what is basically like a lot of the, like the arm work I do actually taxes the forearms directly. And so like what I'm attempting to do is build all of the um, like supporting mechanics for the wrist, like everything up here, because there's no TFCC here to fucking take it. So um, basically I'm sort of like a lot of what I do fucking is, you know, this sort of action and downward action. And so, uh yeah, so my forearms are kind of sore, kind of sort of. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah. One of the the PA at the doctors today. So I was at at nine a.m. So forgive my energy levels, but I'm I'm so done. I'm so done at this point. Um. PA at my fucking doctor's office today. Um, when we, Doc and I were talking about the fucking testosterone, she goes, well, just be sure not to take too much. And he and I both just kind of do the, like, legitimate Hollywood. We just sort of, like, he and I are looking at each other, and she's over here, and he and I just sort of... Anyway... <laughs> Just simultaneously, like, <sighs> anyway. <laughs> sure. Uh, I'd do the same for the left arm, too. Hate every second of it. Yep. Uh, yeah, it was um, like, look, I'm, I'm not, I'm not stopping. It's, it's increased my quality of life to a degree that, like I've told all my doctors, prescribe it or not, set a level that you want to set. It doesn't matter. I've found the, I've found the level I like. I've found, um, yeah, I've found what works and you, you're not taking it from me. Like you can't, like you just can't functionally y'all can't. So either just get on board, get on the fucking train and join me for the ride or get the fuck off the train because this is how it's going to be. Um, looking forward to getting on the sauce in my late forties. Cat, you'll, you'll want to do it before your, your late forties. You'll want to do it by mid thirties. Yeah. By 35, you'll be like, where is that shit? hundred percent. hundred percent legitimately probably by the time you turn 30 you'll be like uh <laughs> can i get some fucking testosterone up in this bitch oh <laughs> uh, i'm looking to for 2022 i'm looking to put on another 15 pounds of muscle that's the goal i want to put on another 15 pounds of muscle just sheer muscle. Um, I want more everywhere. Basically. That's how it works out. Um, so that's that's the goal for the next year. Is another 15 pounds of muscle. Um, I'd like to see it on my biceps. I'd like to see it on my I, arms and legs. Arms and legs. That's where I'd like to see it most. 
but I'll be working on that core too because you have to because you have to Caboose, I'm already feeling it yeah dude Caboose your fucking doctor read your numbers wrong straight up I remember I remember you telling me your numbers I'm like yeah that's that's hypogonadal by by definition but your doctor's like no it's fine fucking doctors um how is it so much easier for dudes to get tea? This is not fair. Skolaru, it isn't easy for us to get testosterone. It isn't. It's a highly controlled drug in North America. If you're in the UK, dude, you can basically phone order it. If you're in the UK, if you're in Europe, getting testosterone, a lot easier. If you're in North America, it's, it's extraordinarily difficult to get your hands on testosterone, actually. It's a tightly controlled drug. Yeah. Um... A little low, but not bad. Yeah. I'm going to be, I'm going to be straight up like misogynistic. I'm just going to straight up like spoken like a woman, right? She doesn't know what it feels like. She has no idea what it feels like to, to have that decreased testosterone level production, right? Like if you've never dealt with testosterone and then lower testosterone, you have no idea what it feels like. It's fucking miserable. It's fucking miserable. So, yeah. You still need estrogen yourself. Um, estrogen's easier to get. Estrogen is actually easier to get your hands on than testosterone. It's part of the trans conspiracy. My doctor's in on it. Um... Getting injection testosterone is hard. Pe getting pellet testosterone is easy, says Cassidy. Dude, those pellets are worthless. Those pellets are fucking stupid. Um, Oh, and fun fact, um, HRT is over the counter in Mexico. Just, just so you know. Oh, yeah, Bobby, <laughs> fucking, there's a lot of stuff that I, you know, yeah, just can't, I can't overwork the knee, that's all, um, but trust me, I know, um, I was landscaping a few years, uh, it was the only time I could put on muscle so far, I think the gas hedge trimmer and string trimmer is shaking while stabilizing helped, probably, actually, um, little, yeah, it'd be like, sort of like an, uh, would it be an ISO or plyo? I think it'd be a plyometric. Um, Fina? It probably would be. Um, Caboose? We'll talk about it. I'll, 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 we'll, I'll get you sorted. I'll, I'll tell you what to say. And so, yeah, I, I, she's going to have some fair comebacks, so we'll have to just prep around it and you might have to get a, just a new doctor, but I'll, we'll work on it. Uh, I think Joe Rogan is an, a hyper realistic Chinese AI prove otherwise. Um, Yeah, I, I, I've, I have not seen any evidence to the contrary. So as far as I'm concerned, Joe Rogan is a hyper-realistic Chinese AI. Puppeted by Ben Shapiro. God, when you know, you think about it, he kind of sounds like one. Something, something teapot orbiting the sun. Ah... Uh,
Uh, yeah, Cricks. I mean, that's up to Caboose whether you know he wants other people in on the conversation. But I'll 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 share what what is said. Oh shit, that makes sense. I've never seen him in a room with a hyper-realistic Chinese AI. <laughs> you sure it's hyper-realistic? It's all hairless and they got the color weird, kind of weird. Except it's not hairless. Is it hairless? Is he hairless? I thought he was all hairy. I thought he was all like manly man Harry. I, 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 to be fair, I haven't seen Joe Rogan without a shirt. Uh, just FYI, there's a fairly popular gay porn actor whose first name is Rogan. So if you look for Joe Rogan shirtless with your um, safe search off, um, chances are the first thing you're going to get is a fair amount of gay porn. Just, just, just FYI. That's definitely, def definitely a thing. Um, so just, you know, know if you go looking. Um. <laughs> Joe Rogan uploaded a 20 minute Instagram video of him just in an ice bath because Joe Rogan. <laughs> Marcus, is that a warning or a recommendation? I don't know, you know. Por que no los dos? <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> too tired for this. <laughs> I'm too tired for this. This is breaking me. crying see the video. I have to see the video. I need to see the video. God. All right, let me see it. <laughs> oh, 
I mean, oh, Rev, I think that's probably a bespoke bath. I th uh, Not bespoke, but I think that's probably a custom cold bath. I think it's probably a cold water therapy tub. Knowing him? Yeah. Peak male performance is fucking weird. Unironical, yes. It is. Peak performance is weird. You can just subtract the male. Peak performance is weird. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd, if I had to guess, that's a cold therapy tub. Based on the fact that it was um, like a stainless steel liner too. Hang on, let me look at that again. Yeah. Oh, no, you can hear. You can hear the compressor, even. It's a stainless steel liner, and you can hear the compressor. Yeah, that's a, that's a cold therapy tub. Um, so, <clears throat> I mean, I wish I had one, right? Like, side by side, you want a hot tub right next to your cold therapy tub. 100%. I'd take one. You kidding me? Anybody who works out would take one of those in the heart in a heartbeat. Yeah, cold therapy tub at your disposal. Oh yeah, that's that's super useful. I always hated the cold therapy tub. Nobody likes it, Bobby. Nobody likes that fucking thing. It's it's a fucking it's goddamn torture. Nobody likes it, but it helps with performance. It does. There's no way around that. So. Caboose basically it drops your inflammation levels to fucking just to the floor. It reduces swelling. It controls inflammation. It controls pain levels. Um, Bush, I know a dude that likes it. He's weird, but that's okay. Weird is good. Um, have you considered I just like being sore tomorrow? Well, I mean, you know my policy on Dom's cat. Oh, burger. Hang on. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> I didn't say it didn't help. I just hated it. So I into in it way too often. I pushed too hard when I was younger. Bobby, didn't we all? Um, didn't we all? Right? Like, were you trying? I look. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for everybody here who it, like didn't do the thing. That like Bobby did, Cassidy did, I did, fucking, I know Cat's doing as we speak, basically, because Cat's still in that age category, right? Look, there's a category of human beings, hey, <laughs> hey, well, doggo, 34, thanks for following. There's a category of human beings that do this, like sort of in, innately, right? Like we just sort of seek it out and we tend to overdo it. <laughs> The ones that do the physical activity things, the ones that do the extreme sports, the ones that push themselves beyond the limit, right? They redefine their limits. We pay the price. We pay the fucking price. Sparrow, thanks for the follow. Um. Oh God, what does it look? Jesus. Oh, for tooth. This is cursed. It's just cursed for twos.
Two people went for the po uh, Pinocchio. So, comes with the territory, and yeah, fucking Bobby, I feel ya. So I'm adding a cold therapy bathtub and a double shower to my bougie wish list. Uh, wish list. Don't forget your sauna. Wither, don't forget your sauna. We all need saunas. And yes, I'm actually saying sauna rather than sauna, which is the standard North American pronunciation. Um, <coughs> but yeah, uh, sauna therapy, hot, um, that'll save your life. I, I'm not following it. Uh, get the dedicated hot room to hot tub room too, says Bobby. Um, yeah. I just want the bougie big ass walk-in shower. That's the only thing on my bougie wish list. I want my own personal mountain. I want my own personal mountain back, Axel. I want my own personal mountain back. But I feel you. Um, it was always cold as fuck, but I really miss swimming in the Colorado River and lakes. Uh, Crimson, it's been a few years since I swam in the Colorado. Um, but for many years, for a bunch of years, um, at a buddy who had, had um, house on the river. Um, I had a friend whose family owned multiple boats and we would go out on um, boating. Yeah, I spent a fair amount of time on the Colorado. And a chew. Um, I'm not huge on the dance club, to be perfectly honest. But if it were a house party, um, yeah, yeah, I'm kind of a guy who knows how to keep things entertaining. Um, and thank you. I, I, you know, I was a kid. I was a fucking single digits in the '80s. Um, but I dig it. Um. It's never big on the clubs. They don't they don't interest me. But I feel you. I feel you. Oh, oh man. Like I said, I'm exhausted. Uh it's been a long day for me already. But we're doing this shit anyway. And I'm yawning, so I'm sorry for all of those of you who just had a sympathetic yawn. Try Try Will Nas cosplaying as me, Gio. Um. Oh yeah, Crimson. Yeah, camp showers are always rough. Camp showers are always rough. Thank you for the follow, and thank you for the follow. Um. Yeah, those are always rough. I remember. Um, God, there's one shower in particular I still remember. It's when we were um, we were rafting the Tennessee River, and it was just it was just a miserable morning, and the the heat there was no heat on the like campground showers, and our our like camp showers just weren't warming up, and it was just it was a nightmare, and we just all ended up having to take cold showers. Well, this more uh, this rafting trip, and it was just like what a great way to start your morning on a cold morning anyway is fucking you know a nice cold shower. I know a bunch of us just opted out. We're like, you know what, I'm good. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna fucking. I'm gonna. In, I'm gonna be in the river in a minute. I'm already going to be frozen. This day is going to be miserable to start with. I don't need to start it a different way. Oh, Aww, tech support. I'm sorry.
And a chew, then I would have gotten an invite. I wear plenty of black. Um. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, I think. I I I I had to, I kind of wanted to do some like theory reading today, but the only theory I want to read is like some Bob Black, and I don't know if I've got the voice for doing the entire section I want to do today. But we'll see. I I kind of want to do abolition of work, which is this section right here. Y'all responded pretty well to it. But I'm still Jesus Christ. Who? Uh, um. Oh, and I've been explicitly instructed again. Hashtag not a doctor. Hashtag not fucking medical advice. Um, but the doctor I saw today, I've known him for years, and I explicitly, I he's the one doctor. I'm I'm serious. He's the one doctor I trust. Like, explicitly. I trust the man. Um, he's an expert in a couple of very specific fields. Um, and I was instructed explicitly today, go get your booster. Really? Yeah. Go get your fucking COVID booster. Like, uh, this is a doctor telling you, do it. You're under doctor's instructions now. Go get your COVID booster. Um, he specifically ensured that his office got the Moderna. And they're seeing some of their... They've had a couple of employees pop with breakthroughs. Um, so they're already... They're like, yeah, go get your fucking booster. Just just do it. So, yeah, I have explicit instructions from a doctor um, to get my, um, get it. So, I'm going to do it um, next week. I'm doing it next Wednesday. Uh, I wish my first rafting experience wasn't ruined for me. Family went down the drop, and the tube flipped to my head, fit the rocks twice. <laughs> I'm so sorry I laughed at that, but uh, once I resurfaced, I had to pull my little sister out of the water because she was having issues resurfacing, and I had to find all our shit that turned over and bring the tube to shore. That sucks, Crimson. Um, Your friend had breakthrough, so did Curio. Jesus Christ. Um... Rev, I don't know. I don't know. All I know is that a doctor, the one doctor in this valley, I, I truly put my hand, life in his hands. Like, I, I, I trust him explicitly. He has, he has literally saved my life before. Um, no joke. He has literally saved my life before. Um, told me to do it. Do it, I shall. I mean, in a two, most of them are doing it for free. Lost Zoat. Sounds like my first surfing attempt. You know, we broke my neck under the wave. Yeah. I've never been good on a board. Um, snowboard, surfboard, skateboard. I've never been good on, on a board. Great on skis, fine on inline, you know, that sort of thing. But something about boards and me don't get along. I, yeah, in, in a chew, um, fucking Walgreens, CVS, they, they all do it for free.
for Toos. There is a comic, a single panel comic that I have, I have been thinking of for over a decade. And I know you could knock it out in no time. If one of these, I'm going to share the idea with you one of these days. Like I'll, I'll, I'll fucking get with you. I'll send you the, the idea. I'll, I'll send you like what's associated with it. And if you ever have like spare time. Um, okay. Here, here's, here's the idea. Um, is this straight up? Toilet paper is probably okay. Uh, I weigh 142 pounds, and of that, a significant portion is sheer lean muscle. Um, <clears throat> okay, so for Deuce, are you aware of the show How Stuff is Made? Or how it's made? Um, okay. I want a single panel comic, just one panel of the, the stereotypical Western Jehovah deity, God, right? Beard, fluffy clouds in the background, robe. I want God sitting there watching how it's made. That, has, that idea has made me chuckle for ages now just the concept of the the omniscient omnipotent creator deity sitting there enjoying the how it's made tv show or how stuff is made tv show right like for some reason that tickles me on a level i think that works for a perfect single panel I used to be super fat, almost 300 pounds. Now I'm down to 225. <clears throat> Mad props, isn't you? Mad props. Um, that, that takes fucking work. Dropping 75. Dude, dropping one. Doesn't matter. Um, doesn't matter. Dropping one or dropping 75. It's still all work at the end of the day. And mad respect for doing it. Uh, family and friends with yearly tradition of floating down the Yukon. I guess it's paused. Um, Dawson all the way to Circle Hot Spring, Alaska. Uh, nine day float with seven to se uh, seven to seventeen canoes in all. Bungee cord them together for lunch every day. One canoe carried all the beer and all kinds of drugs for the trip. Um. Nonsense. I'm sketching a super fat Jesus with the words Christ mass. Oh, yeah. Rev. I've seen those. Those are mountains. Yeah. Um. See if I can find something that's comparable to what I used to use. that territory and then I'm sure you can 
It's just not going to be easy. I'm done looking. Um, I mean, in a two, if you can find me the original one of that original Scientology intro video, hold, having God holding a baby chimp, by all means, I'll give it a look. Hey, Nightwater. Uh, all right. Let's do some of these fucking memes and images and headlines I saw while we were gone. First up. My favorite part of this is etc. Traditional, the the queers are killing traditional family and Christian values and sanctity of marriage and etc. Yeah, it, it's the etc. that really makes it work. Denmark, <coughs> Denmark, mobile hospital. Yeah, oh yeah, Rev. Yeah, it's it's uh, um it's just a mobile hospital in Denmark. Um so far so far it's it's been used to like treat minor injuries and take pressure off of like Danish hospitals. Apparently by all accounts it has been hugely successful and of course is completely free of charge. Right? Like you can you can just be taken care of in this and you'd be fine. That's just part of it. Yeah, look, yeah, it's been mentioned multiple times. Okay, Jack Dorsey is no longer in charge of Twitter. I don't care. Twitter is a nightmare, and it's not because Jack Dorsey is in charge of it. Yes, it's the sun, uh, but it actually happened. I have the, the article associated with it as well. Um, nine mil. Loaded nine mil in her pussy. She put a ni loaded nine mil in her fucking vagina. And whoopsie. She is okay. She's fine. When uh, when uh, when EMT showed up, she was um, standing in the front yard. She was conscious. She was with it, despite the injury she had sustained. Um. Yeah. I Cassie. I have no idea. I have no idea. But. Yeah. You know, turd, what are you going to do? I don't have an opinion on that. I'm not allowed to have an opinion on this on this network, on this service, Wilhelm. Um, it is an era between the 1880s and 1920s of increased anarchist activity. Um, and we will leave it at that. Um, ben Garrison 
if you guys know who Ben Garrison is, um, Ben Garrison. Oh, we'll save that. <sighs> um, good news, everyone. Good news, everyone. Mouse study shows microplastics infiltrate uh, or bypass blood brain bar uh, uh, blood brain barrier. Orally administered polystyrene microplastics two micrometers in size over seven days. Once in the brain, the scientists found that the particles built up in the microglial cells, which are key to uh, healthy maintenance of the central nervous system. This had a significant impact in their ability to proliferate. This was because the microglial cells saw the plastic particles as a threat, causing changes in their morphology and ultimately leading to apoptosis or programmed cell death. Oh, also uh, changes to the immune system via alterations of the expression of relevant genes, related, uh, related antibodies, and micro -RNA RNAs. <clears throat> so, you know, good news. Caboose. If you if you want if you want like a high end one, you want one that you can take down to parts and then rebuild if necessary, including like the electrical harness and shit like that. Like you can truly rebuild it. At like I can put you in touch with my guy. Yeah, it's not cheap. It's like fifteen hundred bucks, sixteen hundred bucks, something like that. But it's a pressure distiller. And you can ma maintain it for years to come. So let me know. I can I can get you my guy. Yeah, the production rate on something like that, Rev, is a nightmare. I love that you have a guy for that. He's in Louisiana too, by the way. Yeah, my 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 distiller guy lives in Louisiana. Yeah, crooks for drinking. Um, let me find out.
I got his information. Fuck it. Um, New Iberia. <coughs> New Iberia. So, if that's near you. Yeah. Uh, Karina, it just depends on what you're att you're attempting to like, what level of living you're attempting to do. Um, yeah. You're gonna try and maintain electricity. You're gonna have like high tech equipment. That means you're gonna have to have solar and you know battery packs and that sort of thing. It just depends on what level you're attempting to do. But as far as I'm concerned, like. Um, if you have enough wherewithal, if you have enough knowledge, if you have enough time, if you're physically fit enough and you're in the correct area and you have access to the like land resources that are necessary to establish such a thing, you can be pretty self-sufficient. It just takes a fair amount of stuff to start with. I mean, look, you can all sit there and fucking say like, oh, this, 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 and this, this, and this. Glazy, unless you know the source of your brain fog, you could throw a lot of things at it and not make a lick of difference. Um, so that's issue number one, right? Like, Sure, maybe he's not oxygenated enough and he's getting inferior sleep, right? And he needs a CPAP machine and breathing exercises. Or maybe he's got a dietary efficiency, in, uh, uh, inefficiency or uh, deficiency, sorry. He's got a dietary deficiency. Or he could actually have like an underlying condition. There could be, you know, a hormonal issue, could be a thyroid issue. There could be a whole host of things that are leading to brain fog. So, I mean, before one begins prescribing things for somebody who says, I have brain fog, um, you need a, you need a workup. You need a basic, you need a basic CBC. You need, uh, an endo panel done. You need, uh, you need a full workup. Yeah, you need a you need a full workup, Glazy. You need to go to a doctor. It got <laughs> drink brain mist. Brain 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 mist coming to a store near you. Um. I get brain fog when my hormones are off, so some sense. Yeah, like there's a whole bunch of stuff that could be causing it. And until we eliminate X, Y, and Z, right, it's just pointless to be speculative about it. Yeah, you need blood work. Cowpoke. Basically what I have going on right now, only mine is like knowingly induced, right? Um, inability to think clearly, decreased reaction time and speed, um, a haziness of thought, 
a general cloudiness. Of course, this is because I've been up for ever at this point. Um, yeah. <laughs> exactly, level. Exactly. Hey, good on your resolution. Yep, mine's scheduled for Wednesday of next week. So if I take Wednesday and or Thursday off next week, don't be surprised. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, Cal, I've felt that before. But mine was psychedelically induced. So... But I've been there. I know what you're experiencing. I have to take three days if it's like the last one. This is a resolution. Yeah. Fair enough, Crimson. Oh, what'll happen is post stream, I will thaw some food. I'll get some like meat out of the freezer. Um, I will probably do arms today. I've already started to do arms, but I'll do arms today. Seeing as I took arms off yesterday, but I did core and legs. I will work my arms. I will smoke some weed, I will pass out, and I will wake up at like 3 or 4 a.m. And I will make like a couple of steaks or something like that. And eat that with a fucking um, sweet potato. And then I will pass back out. I'm pretty sure that's how tonight's going to look. That or what's going to happen is that I'm going to pass the barrier. And shit will begin to get weird. Tiredness will go away. And I will be up all night anyway. Um, so we shall see. That's entirely possible that, that I just, yeah, you're going to get the goofies. I like the goofies. The goofies are a fun place to be for me. If I start to get the goofies here on stream, I'll fucking smoke some weed and we'll do this shit. Um, hey, got me in. My, I mean, four in the morning is nothing for me usually, but... I know. Nonsense, I know. And I, since I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to be good about it, I'm building muscle. Like, I'm actually seeing gains, right? Like, I'm seeing gains, y'all. Um, sleep is super important to that. Um, but, you know, I've got the new mattress coming. It should be here this Saturday. And so, you know, I'm going to try and, I'm going to try and be a lot healthier about my sleep patterns as well. Like, not... I'm not going to fucking, don't worry, I'm not coming around to, like, society's definition. But I am going to try and, like, create a situation where my, my sleep is less interrupted. So, yeah. In before thick thigh kai. Cat, you've never seen. When I was, Cat, when I was in high school, you should have seen my thighs. They were fucking thick, man. Like, they were thick. I was running many miles every day. I was doing competitive inline. I was still doing like rock climbing and all uh, like all repelling. Um, dude, my thighs and calves were fucking thick. It was ridiculous. Like it's skinny little fucking twink top. Fucking thick thighs. Yeah. Ooh, Matrix night loader. Um both commune both encapsulated and arco thick thighs i mean Crimson. I mean, go for it. 
As long as you know your limits and you don't walk away with hypothermia or some shit, go for it. Um, all right. Did everybody see what China's doing? This is, this is my favorite. Fucking, the tankies are already trying to defend this shit. It's fucking hilarious. So, Uganda, um, the Entebbe International Airport. Uganda, um tried to renegotiate what are generally listed as toxic clauses in a $200 million loan from um, for an airport expansion six years ago from China. They're defaulting on the loan. China's, China's taking the only international airport in Uganda. Whoopsie. Go for it. Go for it, Karina. I mean, Distrin. When the bank forecloses on your house, is that by force? I mean, I would define that by force, yes. But yeah, they're gonna take it as they're gonna take it as an asset. A resolution, take care of yourself. <laughs> but, 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 but China's anti imperialist imperialist though. Yeah. Weather. Predatory lending. It's 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 a it's a Western tactic. <coughs> they learned it from us. <laughs> Nonsense, Jesus. <gasps> Wait, is this what I think it is? this yay i have had this in my mind's eye for ages oh thank you Kabo thank you caboose thank you for twos sorry it's the ooze that was fucking in my head this thank you for twos i have had this i'm not kidding you where is it I've had this written on a post-it note to the point where the, the back is completely not even sticky. It's literally just tape. I have a piece of tape up here. I've been, I've had this on a, on a post-it note for ages. I know, right? Right, cat. Oh, for two, so you gotta sign it. You, you gotta fucking put a signature on your shit for two. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta sign your shit. But I'm, I'm gonna put this some places. Send me one with a signature. Distant. In all knowing, all seeing creator, right? The, 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 the Abrahamic deity of Jehovah, right? Omnipish, uh, omnipotent and omniscient, right? Knows everything, sees everything. Is sitting there watching the TV show, how it's made and enjoying himself. If you don't understand the, 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 The beauty and the humor in that, the juxtaposition, the sort of the, the clever little like tip of the hat to creators unto themselves, 
right? Like it's caboose. I can too. I, I, this, this just, this tickles a certain level. Yeah, fuck Huawei or whatever their name is. Sorry. Um, cow poker. Yes. Bit of win. Bit of win. Thank you for the resub, bit of win. Um, well, Caboose, it depends which direction you look at it from. I don't really care. I think the entire concept of God watching how it's made is hilarious. Right? Like, whether whether you see it as God watching it to figure out how shit's made, or God watching it because appreciating the creative process, or... Just God vibing on other people making shit like creators do, right? Like creators, creators, people who make stuff, makers love watching people make stuff. Um, so I don't really, it doesn't really matter how you look at it. I've always just thought the, the entire concept was kind of great, right? Like. Yeah, God watching fat bong rips and watching the conveyor belts go by on how it's made and shit. Yeah, Caboose, like any good art, there should be multiple possible interpretations, I think. Um, yeah, but I, I, I've, I've thought about this this single comic panel. Like I said, it's it's been with me on a post-it note for so long now. Um... It's not a ha ha joke. It's a ho ho joke. Um, eh, in a chew, I can work around him. A tweet of God could use that cartoon. <laughs> um, ooh, tech support. That would be fucking brilliant, right? Um, yeah, Distrin, you have to have seen the show. One, the show is a fucking... Is addictive. The show is addictive. It's a really, really good show. It's a really good show. Um... <laughs> Leftists make me sick because what they... Uh, because they say is wrong and stupid. Leftists make me sick. Let's parse this language for a second. Leftists make me sick because they say is wrong and stupid. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Night hooder, bingo. Um... Go home, you're drunk. Uh, <laughs> but can they? Why? Uh, <laughs> Crimson. Fair enough, Crimson. Fair enough. Um... Trolls getting dumber or more meta. The world may never know. Um, oh yeah, yeah, this is the start of um. Capable of automatically synchronizing cardinal gram meters. <sighs> What's the subreddit? There's this, that that video started an entire subreddit. 
Um, I forget the name of it, though. But yes, I have most assuredly seen that video in a Jew. Um, signed. There we go. Fucking now I can now I can spread it around. Thank you for twos. Um, where is media art gallery upload? Um, Oh, Rev. Okay. Uh, that's weird. Yep. Hey, what's up, Carpe? Um, Fertus just graced me with um an I with the 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 visual representation of an idea I've had in a lot for a long, long, long time now. Um, and I'm right chuffed at that. Beyond that, I'm entirely overdue for sleep, so things are probably going to start getting a little weird. <clears throat> uh, the burlesque show was entirely too loud. Um, you are <laughs> you're a generous jackass, and I love you for it. Um, the burlesque show was entirely too loud. Um, Diggith, who went with me, um, or who we went together, or however you wish to linguistify that. Um, she said straight up, she was like, it felt like their first show. I don't know if it was their first show, but there was some roughness around the edges. Um, chairs were shit. Did mention this. The chairs were shit. Legitimately, these were some of the most uncomfortable chairs I have sat in in a very long time. And for the price point, I would expect better. Um, yeah. The show itself, um, well, I, I'll tell you what I told everybody when I, I got done with it. I felt like the show... Um, I, I felt like the show was racist towards me as a gay man. Yeah. Yes, I'm intentionally wording it that way. It's to unbunch your leftist panties. Um, so much tits and ass. So many tits and ass, right? Like, I was staring down the fucking, just right down the barrel at one point, Right? Can I get the dudes without fucking, like, pants on, even? Like, they would not undress the guys properly. Like, it was legitimately annoying. I felt I was being discriminated against. Yeah, I think I may have a civil rights lawsuit. <laughs> um... Credit where credit's due. Um, basically, it really was. Um, <coughs> credit where credit's due. No, I don't, Glazy. I hate tits. Um, a good ass, though, I can appreciate. And uh, a couple of those chicks had just one of them. One of those, one of those women in that show. Holy shit, she had a, an amazing ass. Like even I was like, God damn, that's an ass. Just, just perfect just perfect 
skin tone, texture, tightness, muscular, like it legitimately, her ass was amazing looking. I was like, holy shit, good on you. Way to go. Um, credit where credit's due. The show had um, solid representation um, as far as like ethnicity and race and I, there was fairly well split male, female. There was some trans, I think. Look, it's difficult to tell sometimes, but I'm pretty sure they had a couple of um, trans uh, trans female performers. Um, and so, like, you know, they had black and white and Hispanic. They had skinny. They had heavy. They had, you know, cis. They had trans. They definitely had gay as there were male dancers there, right? So they had, they had gay and straight. Um it was, you know, fairly decent representation across the board. It's just, can a brother get some, like, cock and balls up in this bitch? Right? Like, I, I've, I've been staring right in the middle of her fucking crotch while she's been just waving at us over and over and over. Can I get the dudes to, like, take their pants off? Just something? Can I get a banana hammock? Can I get, can I get a thong? Anything? Yeah, I, I, I was, I, uh, the show is rated red, um, by, um, not even chaps, Carpe, not even chaps, um, a burlesque show, a burlesque show is, um, a, a variety show. Um, it comes from the Victorian era, but the American one is far more body. Um, <clears throat> so nudity, blue, blue humor, or, you know, adult comedy, adult humor, um, adult sensibilities, um, but it's a variety show. Um, so that's, that's what a burlesque show is. Um, I know some sense, right? Unacceptable. Thank you, Bush. Thank you. Um. Yeah, I, 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 I sincerely feel like I was being discriminated against as as a proud gay black man. Um. Get in trouble for doing that one of these days. <laughs> but yeah. It's, it, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, as a gay dude I was I was annoyed um I was annoyed legitimately I was like this is this is bullshit this is bullshit I roll for DC. 18. <sighs> You're right for juice, right? Exactly. Might as well. I just, you know, they, they sell it as, I mean, here, let me, let me, Oh, it's all going under the Area 15 heading. Okay, that makes sense.
Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull that. Um, right. A tantalizing departure from the ordinary Las Vegas, Las Vegas burlesque show experience. Rated Red stirs all the desires with stimulating performances that evoke passion, power, desire, danger, seduction, and love. All right. Feel your deepest pleasures unfurl as a fiery cast of diverse dancers tease out your every emotion with each arousing act from lust-inducing dance numbers to wildly powerful pole performances to anything but classic burlesque. Leave no desires unexpressed. Come curious, come wanting, come without inhibition, come worn. There's no turning off the intensity. Mature audiences only, 21 plus to attend. Right? Can a brother get some dick? Nothing. Okay, so I just wanted to screen something really quickly. All right, so you're going to see some flashes of dudes here, right? This is as undressed as the dudes get, okay? See that dude in the, the, the pants with no shirt? That's as undressed as he gets. See that dude over there with the pants and the un his shirt? That's as undressed as they get, right? And here at the beginning, you'll see a flash of those dudes. That's as undressed as they get. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Discern. Of course. I mean, that's why we're talking about it. It's because I was there on Friday with one of the community members. Hmm. Yes, Crimson, basically. Um, one of the guys looked like my ex. Um, I, I got a little starey at one point. Like, I was just like... Right? I'm just looking right at. Um, I'm for Speedos. Nonsense. I'm okay with it. I, I personally would... If, can we just normalize nudity? Is that a thing? Like, is this... is this? Can we just grow the fuck up? I'd like to be able to just, like... Live in a world where not everything is hypersexualized. That'd be great. No, because then you'd be nude around children, and that is a sex act and pedophilia. Yep, yep, yep. Thank you, RGR. I'm not meat. Hey, Digeth. <coughs> uh, Cassidy, the Chippendales get down to, like, thongs or G-strings. They don't get fully nude. bush what's up my man um um the audience i don't know what the audience was comprised of i mean there was there's a couple like old couples there which was always which was amusing there was a couple of like dude groups it's just groups of dudes there seemed to be some sort of like i don't know wedding party or something maybe something like that um, and then a whole lot of people on dates, it seemed like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it ducks. Um, I think Thunder from Down Under gets naked. Yeah, I do think that that is a thing.
Crimson. Jesus. Uh, jock straps are superior to speedos. Depends what you're trying to do, but yeah. What are my thoughts about what? What's your thoughts about communism? I mean, uh, Diggith. Yeah, we're talking about our date night. Um, I was talking about how they were racist towards me as a gay man. Uh, uh, but um, I mean, Jesus, talk about a fucking question, right? You want to narrow that down? Um. All right, cat. Well, let me know, and just just let me know, and we'll hang out. Hey, Viva. If you want to achieve communism, the only way to get there is through anarchism. You can't do it through centralizing authoritarian communism like has been uh, prescribed by Marx or Lenin or fucking Stalin or Trotsky or Mao. There you go. There's my thoughts on communism. Um. bring back merkins oh jesus yeah I, I mentioned that you you thought it was their first show by like how like well for a few reasons um uh, but yeah oh that just moved a fair amount of blood around my body <laughs> Sorry, engaged a whole bunch of core and fucking right, yeah. Um, Marx is great at d uh, describing the problem. After that, not as much help, not as not as helpful. Um, any thoughts thus far, Carpe? Um. All right. We talked about that. We talked about that. Oh, yes. Here's another one. Uh, it's because he is nicer. Carpe. Legitimately. He's still got, like, old-timey problems, but... Oh, you know what? All right. Hold on. We'll do this one first. Um, this is a 10,000 year old petroglyph, uh, at Val Camonica in Italy. I just, just so you know, um, commune, um, give me, give me a little bit. Just so you know, human beings, right? 10,000-year-old petroglyph uh, from Val Camonica, uh, Camonica in Italy. We haven't changed for, for shit. <laughs> Archaeologists, they were good friends. <laughs> roommates. Roommates. They were roommates. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fucking furries. <laughs> Ten thousand years old. <laughs> oh. Ten thousand years. Cave painting of a dude fucking the donkey. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, folks. We're babies. We're still fucking children. 
right? This species is not close to solving its issues. <laughs> We're so fucking young as a species. Yeah, all this goddamn degeneracy is killing our society, ancient humans thousands of years ago. All right. Here's 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 another joke, but of a different nature. Pat Robertson says critical race theory is a monstrous evil that's urging people of color to rise up and overtake their oppressors so that once they've gotten the whip handle, they'll then instruct their white neighbors how to behave. All right, there's a lot to unpack here, actually. So Pat Robertson is admitting that white people are the people of color's oppressors He's admitting that they're holding the whip handle, that there are people being whipped and that there are people doing the whipping. Right? Like this is like he just, he just like, he just leaned into it. Right? Like, he's like, yeah, fucking white people are the oppressors. Fuck yeah, they are. And it should stay that way, the way God intended it. And I just, I just... I just want you to see this video. It's seven, it's eight seconds, right? This is, we're going to watch it a couple of times. Right? Like, I get that, like, Zuckerberg is probably, like, on spectrum somewhere. Asperger's territory right like I, I get that Zuckerberg but why is he so fucking weird right like okay so let's let's watch a video right he's what what is this what what why does this exist why did he release this what is going on this is it, Marcus is it the toast video it's the toast video what is going on with this fucking video? Nobody fucking... All right. All right, let's break this down. Because this is fucking weird as shit. Right? Like, I... I <laughs> yes, yes. Somebody pointed out, they said, this is poorly optimized code. Right? Like, this is, this is what this is. This is some, like, Android poorly optimized code, right? Fucking... All right. So he takes the toast from the fucking toaster in a way that honestly feels off again. Immediately places it on the fucking, uh, on the plate with another piece of toast. Then immediately picks it back up. Does the weird hand motion and then picks up and eats dry toast while doing this dead stare. Right? Like, look at this fucking just. And then the head nod with it. That dude is weird as shit, man. Something's off there. <laughs> I, I toast accomplished. <laughs> I love bread. I am normal human person. Um, no, Caboose, I wouldn't be surprised either if, if you actually were a fucking super advanced android that they let out of the lab. No, everything about that video is weird. It doesn't feel everything about, you know what? Everything in that video feels uncanny valley. Everything in that video feels uncanny valley. 
from from the way he 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 picks things up to the the operations to the iterations to the the weird fucking just like bite he takes to the fact that he's eating dry toast to the weird dead stare that he's doing everything feels uncanny valley in that video Time for my call with Shrep. Can you get him on the video conference? That's so soothing. Sure, sure. Jarvis also helps me get ready in the morning. Fresh shirt. Fire in the hole. Hell yeah. <laughs> Jarvis knows when to make me breakfast. Your toast is ready. All right. It's time for my call with Shrep. Can you get him on the video conference line? Setting up the VC room now. Remember to check on the AI guidance system for Aquila. One of the best things about Jarvis is it could recognize people That doesn't help. <sighs> no, cat, it felt worse for me. It felt worse. Oh. Um. I think you give him too much credit or one of his employees too much credit. Um, let's see. Disney's kowtowing to China again. No surprise there. Um, fucking they pulled the Simpsons episode that like fucking criticizes uh, ch the CCP and talks about Tiananmen Square. And they make a joke about it. Yeah. They pulled that for like distribution overseas and like Hong Kong and shit like that, right? Um, oh, Vexology Circle Jerk Caboose, did you see this one? Um, Pride flag, but it's the glorious Bob Semple tank. For those of you who don't know, those of you that don't know what we're looking at, that's Killdozer. I, I mean, it definitely could be interpreted that way. Um, and while we're at it, just FYI, um, this is what a rubber bullet is. This is this is what a, a rubber bullet is. It is a hard plastic outer shell that encapsulates a metal bearing. None of it is rubber, technically, Asman. And there's there's no rubber in a rubber bullet. That's 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 not not really a thing. This is this is what is shot out of shotguns. Um, yeah, oh, cool. Plastic wrapped musket ball. Much better. Yeah. So, yeah, just thought you guys should see it.
Oh, let's see if I can find this. Hang on. Uh, Disrin, if technically, not really. Um. All right, cool. Let me get that link. All right, Governor Greg Abbott of Texas. Biden banned travel from South Africa because of the new COVID variant. Immigrants have been recently apprehended crossing our border illegally from South Africa. Biden is doing nothing to stop immigrants from South Africa entering illegally. Pure politics and hypocrisy. So... Apparently, Greg Abbott is calling for us to send South Africans back to South Africa now. Um, I have a modest proposal. It would work. Can we, can we, maybe? Can we get rid of that welfare queen? Oh, we can't watch this one on fucking stream. Oh. Pasco County got caught at it again. How many fucking times am I going to have to talk about Pasco County, Pasco County on this fucking stream? They got caught at it again. Straight up. So, of course, Glazy, Pasco County is one of the, yes, the minority report people. Yeah, that Pasco County. Fucking Pasco County Sheriff's Department is one of the most openly corrupt organizations in the country. Straight up. They are some of the worst people. Um, well, it took the better part of seven years to find out what they did. I can put the link in Discord so you can see. <clears throat> in 2014, they said they shot a gentleman by the name of Jerry Dwight Brown during a drug bust after he refused to surrender and ignored orders to raise his hands. Tampa Bay Times put in the fucking work. They put in the goddamn work. Um, basically, they found the video. And they released it. It took them the better part of seven years. Um, they straight executed him. Yeah. Yeah. They gave him no time whatsoever. They gave him no clear and immediate blah, 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 blah. They rolled up and shot the dude. It's in the video. They rolled up and shot the dude. Um, after, the t uh, after Tampa Bay Times told the sheriff's office that they had independently obtained the video finally and that they were intending to publish it, Lindsay Moore the bootlicker for the uh, uh, the sheriff's department, the office's general counsel, said, quote, video portions depicting the death of Mr. Brown are clearly confidential and exempt from public disclosure, and any publishing of the video would be in violation of the law. And then the Tampa Bay Times, like the big dick motherfuckers that they were, said, we'll be sure to include your statement on the release. And then they released it. 
It's like, mm-hmm. good for you. Anyway, seven years. Seven fucking years. No, the Tampa Bay Times has been putting in work recently, Zippy. Like, respect to the, the, the reporters and the editors at the Tampa Bay Times. The Tampa Bay Times have been putting in fucking work. I, I, I've been impressed with the work they've been doing, especially centered and concerning Pasco County. Fucking Pasco's a shithole. Pasco and um, Aurora, right? Aurora, Colorado and Pasco County, Florida. Don't go there. Just don't go there. Um... Oh, Albuquerque, by the way, as well. Albuquerque, New Mexico. It's one of those those police departments you don't want to fuck around with. Um, deputies, of course, lied across the board. They, he was reaching for something, blah, 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 fucking, you know, all those sorts of things. Um, yeah. But. They executed him. Viva, even I heard of Aurora, Colorado being bullshit, uh, being shit. Yeah. No, um, just another example, just another example. Dude, Aurora's, Aurora, Colorado is dangerous to go to. And it's not because of the fucking residents. Call me and that's how I roll too. <clears throat> if a cop's mouth is moving, they're assumed to be lying. Oof. Marcus, that's rough. <sighs> Sounds about right, Rev. Carpe, I'm with you on the suit thing, too. Yeah. It's the fucking uniform of the people who fuck us over on a regular basis. Yeah. Yeah, Zippy. Like I said, I've I've been impressed with Tampa Bay Times recently. My sister and family lives in Aurora. I can vouch that the cups suck ass. Yeah, no, fucking Aurora's. Aurora's had a bunch of those. Like, that was the the old lady with dementia, whose arm they like twisted out of its socket. They've had a whole bunch of shootings. Yeah. Um. So, Glasgow, uh, GlaxoSmithKline, pharmaceutical giant, they're kicking off human trials for an HIV cure. For real. Um, the head of, um, the head of GlaxoSmithKline was doing a, um, business, uh, business interview. Um, and straight up was talking about how they're the, um, the hedge funds that run them, um, weren't satisfied with Viv or Viv, um, their HIV division and, um, the person in charge of it, uh, Dame Emma w Walmsley, JSK's, uh, chief exec wants to quote, shake off 
um, their activist investor, Elliot Management. Apparently, Elliott Management's been complaining about how the fucking HIV business is uh, profit is going to fall off a cliff when the exclusivity period of its one of its drugs expires over the next eight years, and so they don't want to put any money into it and this sort of thing. And during the interview, she mentioned that they are starting trials. on a potential cure they're 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 in the very very early stages but GlaxoSmithKline's HIV division is looking at it with that eye right now that they're looking towards a cure so night cow poker um I mean, there's a whole lot of shit fuckery, right? There's a whole lot of shit fuckery, but it's something. Um, Okay, we've now reached the portion of the stream where we all just ha are going to have a headache. Some, <coughs> some of you are aware of this already. Some of our, uh, some of you are not. Those of you who aren't, congratulations on living a better life. Um, those of you who are aware. I'm sorry, um, but um, there has been this person on TikTok that has been basically saying ancient Rome didn't exist and that fucking Rome wasn't real and that the Catholic Church made up Latin and that, yes, um, one of one of this person's latest claims. Now, the person who's saying all of this is dumb as sticks, by the way. She's fucking stupid. But she has amazing hair. I will give her that. Her hair is amazing. Um, but her latest one. Geologists have known for years that there's no distal tephra to even show that there was an explosion of Pompeii's volcano in 79 AD. Saying that ancient Rome doesn't exist is one thing. Saying that Pompeii wasn't a Roman settlement is another. But saying that Pompeii wasn't destroyed by the eruption of Mount Vesuvius has got to be the most blatant lie you've said so far. What she's saying is that there's no evidence of volcanic material at Pompeii or Herculaneum, which is just wrong? The cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum were destroyed by the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD. I never thought I was going to have to defend this, but here we are. Firstly, there are primary documents written by people who were actually there. The most famous of these being the writings of Pliny the Younger, who recounted his horror as he watched Mount Vesuvius erupt from across the Bay of Naples. But I guess if an eyewitness account isn't enough for you, let's take a look at that geology you say doesn't exist. The entire site of Pompeii is buried in between 15 and 20 feet of volcanic ash. This deposition layer occurred as the side of Vesuvius itself exploded, resulting in a superheated landslide of mud and ash called a pyroclastic flow. This is why we find carbonized food still- By the way, if that's not a band name already, it should be. Pyroclastic flow? It, like, that should be- Dude, how is a rapper not taking that name? How is a rapper not taking that name? Right? Pyroclastic flow. It's a fucking badass word. 
still present in the city. We have not uncovered any more of Pompeii really since the original digging out. Why do you think we are uncovering it and digging it out? Because it was buried. This is just wrong. There are very much still ongoing excavations of Pompeii, but you wouldn't want to talk about that because then you'd have to show off the Latin inscriptions on the buried buildings and then you'd have to admit that Latin wasn't invented by the church in the 1500s like you say it was. And finally, the most important piece of this evidence. And I want to give a little bit of a content warning here because it gets a little grim. Donna, Pompeii is estimated to have been inhabited by around 12,000 people. In the excavations which have taken place there, they have found the remains of 1,200 men, women, and children. And while they may be gone, their remains are still here to tell you what happened to them. There are remains of people shielding their faces as toxic smoke and gas melted their lungs. There are groups huddled together contorted in their final moments of agony, and mothers who even now, thousands of years later, are still holding their children in a final attempt to protect them from the inevitable. Donna, they have found the remains of people who met their end because the heat from the pyroclastic flow was so great that their brains boiled and their skulls exploded. When you rewrite history like this, you not only spread misinformation, but you erase the horror that these people experienced. I know that this was nearly 2,000 years ago, but these people were exactly like you and I, so please treat them with some respect. You know, I'm actually quite excited, because in my upcoming YouTube video where me and the rest of Archaeology TikTok break down this conspiracy, I not only have a PhD, two doctors, and a whole host of students who all want to give you a run for their money, but I also have someone who has quite literally participated in the excavations at Pompeii. I'm sure they're gonna have a lot to say to you. For all of you who are now following this Arc Talk boss battle, uh, don't engage with Donna. And if you are going to say something, please be kind. No. <laughs> please be kind and considerate. Yeah, I don't care about that. Um, so apparently there is a pyroclastic flow. You know what? It's kind of a bop. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, bitches, y yeah, um, oh, Black Betty, bang, bang, um, so, <laughs> so in the vein in, in, in the tradition of, okay, so we've, we've now learned that there is a person who, by the way, by the way, by the way, right, certain groups seized upon that person's um, espousals very quickly. Right? Um, when Donna, Mom Millennial, came out and said that, in fact, the Catholic Church created Latin, the entirety of ancient Rome is just a methodology for uh, whitewashing a portion of our history and that we made it all up. Um, let's just say there were certain groups that very quickly seized upon that, that narrative. Um, and well, yeah. So despite it will, it, it will be effectively and effusively and ever so thoroughly refuted by people with credentials, by people with experience by people with actual knowledge in these fields enjoy looking forward to years now of listening to various groups throw this at us that this will be a thing that we will have to hear parroted from time to time for a good 
good while now. Um, just one of the many consp- conspiracies committed by... Yes. So... Um, for those of us, uh, for those of you who weren't there over the weekend, I think it was Saturday night. Um, we watched, um, I'll be generous, a, a documentary, um, so, you know, um, not only was Rome not real, um, trees aren't real. Well, forests aren't real. Um, so it's just so you're aware. Um, <laughs> yeah, documentary. Um, forests aren't real either. Um, just just so, so you're aware. Um, yeah. It, uh, valleys aren't real. Um, yep. Mountains aren't real. Trees aren't real. Um, volcanoes aren't real. Um, the Grand, the Grand Canyon is nothing more than a giant quarry site. Um, it was quite, it was quite the interesting video we watched, uh, on Discord. Um, it was created apparently by, um, a angry Crimean pseudo fascist fascist. Um, For those of you, it's, it's, look, they're purging it pretty quickly, but no fur, uh, no forest on flat earth. Okay. No forest on flat earth. This is what you need to search for. If you want to look for this, let's call it a masterpiece. (laughs) Um, you're definitely going to, you're definitely going to, um, oh, either walk away with a migraine or laugh. Lots of laugh. Lots of laughter. Um, exactly, Axel. That's 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 my my telling of the grand story. I remember the good old days of uh, Robert Anton Wilson ruining people's life in random jackoffs and prints, and then on the internet, those were the days. It was people who took raw seriously under the rug. Uh, I don't think they mentioned it, but the rocks aren't real. Also, those are, uh, oh yeah, no, 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 Rev, they mention it. Right, like that, she mentions that the difference between fucking like the rocks are nothing more than the fragment broken fragments of, uh, yeah, oh yeah, she gets into that. Um, it was the trees, the true trees, the the great silicon trees. By the way, trees used to be made of silicon. I'm uh, sorry, not silicone, silicon, silicon. Uh, trees used to be made of silicon, and they used to uh, a small baby tree. Like a, a young tree would be 60 kilometers high. You're not hearing me incorrectly. I'm not misspeaking. A young silicon tree would be 60 kilometers high. Sometimes they would span hundreds of kilometers in height. No, not lava, magma diggeth. The magma used to have an artificial intelligence attached to it. We never got any explanation of what happened or what became of that, but... Yeah, it, it was it was most assuredly an interesting experience. And this thing's making the rounds. So, you know, Rome isn't real. There are no forests on on flat earth. Um and um yeah. Yeah, so, you know. Welcome. Fuck, people are stupid. <laughs> it, yes, the Spydro birds, yes. Uh, uh, some sense, the woman who narrates the English version is not the author. The author was a Crimean dude. 
So who knows? Okay, so Rome, Rome. Are we talking the city or the empire? Are the Byzantines in on it? Uh, for twos. I don't know. Mom Lenial is her name on TikTok. Mom Lenial underscore, I believe. Go, go. Feel free to go watch her videos. Um, and report back. Uh, I don't. I'd, I'd. I'd love to know. Yeah, I'd, I don't. I don't know. Um, not like Rome matters anyway. The universe was only made last Tuesday. Oh no no no! T t tech support uh, is is near as I can tell based on the the rhetoric. It, look for two. So that's you know. Um, based on the rhetoric, I think that, I think it's like a giant grand conspiracy involving ancient aliens and us being like a worker race or something. Maybe I think it's kind of tied into that. That's how it felt at least. Um, so yeah, that tech support, maybe don't know though. Um, oh, that was, uh, four days ago, but I wasn't on the air. I didn't get to talk about it. Um, oh, um, Thank you, Viva. Um, Mom in Chicago. This is dark. This is dark. This is this is dark. Um, Chicago. This mom's fourteen-year-old kid gets shot in some random random gang violence. Street corner, literally, just street corner, right? Memorial service, candle, a candle, a uh, candlelight vigil. Mom goes out to light a candle in his memory. Mom got shot too. Same street corner. Yeah, I mean it's. Yeah. Um, five kids at home. I think five. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she. They're surviving five. Or maybe she had five and down to four. Yeah. Either way, it's a fucked headline. You can speculate all you want. I have nothing beyond that. Aspen, it's a good way to get your fucking creds. It's a good way to get in. Yeah. Um.
And it's so, it's so fucking detailed too. It, it really is. Because land is an appreciate, uh, is an appreciating asset. Karina. By definition. Um... Oh yeah, caboose. Hundred percent. And there's there's Germany, right? <laughs> With all the beer gardens. All right. Oh, Jesus. Uh, Viva, because blue is the color for beer gardens. Where to get a drink distant? Where to get a drink in Europe? Legitimately. Pub, bar, beer gardens, cafes. Yeah. It's literally a map of where to get a drink in Europe. Karina, welcome to Marx's Critiques of Capitalism. Congratulations, you just finished chapter two of Das Kapital, basically. I don't know if I can do this in one go. Hang on. Oh... I need a tab. There we go. Not that kind of tab. All right. Oh, Jesus Christ. Give me that. All right. It goes here. And it starts here. Yeah. Um. We're a small town, but have like 20 beer gardens. Um, oh, Dust Capital is miserable to read, Karina. It's miserable. Um, all right. Look, what time is it? All right. Look. I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this. I don't know if I'll be able to get through it, um, but we're going to try to get through this. I want to try and do a single read through. Who's, why do I have alerts? Okay. Um, I want to try and do a single read through of the abolition of work. It's 31 pages, but the pages are like, this so theoretically it should go a lot faster it's probably pdfs um how it's oh god fucking a that hurt um host disabled bits disabled raids disabled well um, let's see, I have a copy. All right. All right, let me see what this looks like. It's probably 15-ish. All right. <clears throat> All right, let's try this. Anybody wants to follow along? Here you go. Here's the copy of Abolition of Work by Bob Black. Uh, I'm going to do a separate independent fucking recording of this and put it up on the YouTube channel. 
I just didn't feel like reading any more fucking ANCAP stuff. Um, just not for a minute. I needed a break. So. Uh, it is. It's actually, it's great. Uh, Bob Black, like I said, he's an asshole, but I love him. All right. <clears throat> the Abolition of Work by Bob Black. No one should ever work. Work is the source of nearly all of the misery in the world. Almost any evil you'd, name to, uh, you'd care to name comes from working or from living in a world designed for work. In order to stop suffering, we have to stop working. That doesn't mean we have to stop doing things. It does mean creating a new way of life based on play. In other words, a ludic conviviality, commensiality, and maybe even art. There is more to play than child's play, as worthy as that is. I call for a collective adventure in generalized joy and freely interdependent exuberance. Play isn't passive. Doubtless, we all need a lot more time for sheer sloth and slack than we ever enjoy now, regardless of income or occupation. But once recovered from employment-induced exhaustion, nearly all of us want to act. Oblomovism and Stakhanovism are two sides of the same debased coin. The ludic life is totally incompatible with existing reality. So much the worse for reality, the gravity hole that sucks the vitality from the little in life that still distinguishes it from mere survival. Curiously, or maybe not, all the old ideologies are conservative because they believe in work. Some of them, like Marxism and most brands of anarchism, believe in work all the more fiercely because they believe in so little else. Liberals say we should end employment discrimination. I say we should end employment. Conservatives support right-to-work laws. Following Karl Marx's wayward son-in-law, Paul Lafarge, I support the right to be lazy. Leftists favor full employment, like the surrealists, except that I'm not kidding. I favor full unemployment. Trotsky's agitate for, per for permanent revolution. I agitate for permanent revelry. But if all the ideologues, as they do, advocate work, and not only because they plan to make others do theirs, they're strangely reluctant to say so. They will carry on endlessly about wages and hours and working conditions and exploitation and productivity and profitability. They'll gladly talk about anything but work itself. These experts who offer to do our thinking for us rarely share their conclusions about work, for all its saliency in the lives of all of us. Among themselves, they quibble over the details. Unions and management agree we ought to sell the time of our lives in exchange for survival, although they haggle over the price. Marxists think we should be bossed by bureaucrats. Libertarians think we should be bossed by businessmen. Feminists don't care which form the bossing takes so long as the bosses are women. Clearly, these ideology mongers have serious differences over how to divvy up the spoils of power. Just as clearly, none of them have any objection to power as such, and all of them want us, uh, want us to keep working. You may be wondering if I'm joking or serious. I'm joking and serious. To be ludic is not to be ludicrous. Play doesn't have to be frivolous, although frivolity is in triviality. Very often, we ought to take frivolity seriously. I'd like life to be a game, but a game with high stakes. I want to play for keeps. The alternative to work isn't just idleness. To be ludic is not to be quaaludic. As much as I treasure the pleasure of torpor, it's never more rewarding than when it punctuates other pleasures and pastimes. Nor am I promising the managed time discipline safety valve called leisure. Far from it. Leisure is non-work for the sake of work. Leisure is the time spent recovering from work and in the frenzied but hopeless attempt to forget about work. Many people return from vacation so beat that they look forward to returning to work so they can rest up. The main difference between work 
and leisure is that work, at least you get paid for your alienation and enervation. I'm not playing definitional games with anybody. When I say I want to abolish work, I mean just what I say, but I want to say what I mean by defining my terms in non-idiosyncratic ways. My minimum definition of work is forced labor, that is compulsory production. Both elements are essential. Work is production enforced by economic or political means, by the carrot or the stick. The carrot is just the stick by any other means. But not all creation is work. Work is never done for its own sake. It's done on account of some product or output the worker, or more often somebody else, gets out of it. This is what work necessarily is. To define it is to despise it. But work is usually even worse than its definition decrees. The dynamic of domination intrinsic to work tends over time towards elaboration. In advanced work-riddled societies, including all industrial societies, whether capitalist or communist, work invariably acquires other attributes which accentuates its obnoxiousness. Usually, and this is even more true in communist than capitalist countries, where the state is almost the only employer and everyone is an employee, work is employment, i.e. wage labor, which means selling yourself on an installment plan. Does 95% of Americans who work, work for somebody or something else? In the USSR or Cuba or Yugoslavia or any other alternative model which might be, uh, 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 might be elaborated upon, the corresponding figure approaches 100%. Only the embattled third world peasant bastions, Mexico, India, Brazil, Turkey, temporarily shelter significant concentrations of agriculturists who perpetuate the traditional arrangement of most laborers in the, pa in the last several millennium. The payment of taxes, ransom, to the state or rent to parasitic landlords in return for being otherwise left alone. Even this raw deal is beginning to look good. All industrial and office workers are employees and under the sort of surveillance which ensures servility. But modern work has worse implications. People don't just work, they have jobs. One person does one productive task all the time on an or else basis. Even if the task has a quantum of intrinsic interest, as increasingly many don't, the monotony of its obligatory exclusivity drains its ludic potential. A job that might engage the energies of some people for a reasonably limited time for the fun of it is just a burden on those who have to do it for 40 hours a week with no say in how it should be done for the profit of the owners who contribute nothing to the project and with no opportunity for sharing tasks or spreading the work among those who actually have to do it. This is the real world of work. A world of bureaucratic blundering. Of sexual harassment, of discrimination, of boneheaded bosses exploiting and scapegoating their subordinates who, by any rational technical criteria, should be calling the shots. But capitalism in the real world subordinates the rational maximization of productivity and the profit to the ex uh, exigencies of the organizational control. The degradation which most workers experience on the job is the sum of assorted indignities which can be denominated as discipline. Foucault has complexified this phenomenon, but it is simple enough. Discipline consists of the totality of totalitarian controls at the workplace. Surveillance, rote work, imposed work tempos, production quotas, punching in and out, etc., etc. Discipline is what the factory and the office and the store share with the prison and the school and the mental hospital. It's something historically original and horrible. It was beyond the capacity of such demonic dictators of yore as Nero, uh, Nero and Genghis Khan and Ivan the Terrible. For all their bad intentions, they just didn't have the machinery to control their subje uh, subjects as thoroughly as modern despots do. Discipline is the distinctly diabolical modern mode of control. It's an innovative intrusion which must be interdicted at the earliest opportunity. <clears throat> such as work. Play is just the opposite. Play is voluntary, always. What might otherwise be play is work if it's forced. This is axiomatic. Bernie de Coven has defined play as the suspension of consequences. 
This is unacceptable if it implies that play is inconsequential. The point is not that play is without consequences. This is to demean play. The point is that the consequences, if any, are gratuitous. Playing and giving are closely related. They're the behavioral and transactional facets of the same impulse, the play instinct. They share an aristocratic disdain for results. The player gets something out of playing. That's why they play. But the core reward is the experience of the activity itself, whatever it may be. Some otherwise attentive students of play, like Johan Huizinga, um, define it as game playing or following rules. While I respect his erudition of uh, emphatically reject his constraints. There are many good games, chess, baseball, Monopoly, Bridge, which are rule governed, but there is much more to play than game playing. Conversation, sex, dancing, travel. These practices aren't rule governed, but they are surely play if anything is. And rules can be played with, at least as readily as anything else. Work makes a mockery of freedom. The official line is that we all have rights and live in a democracy. Other unfortunates who aren't as free like we are have to live in police states. These victims obey orders or else, no matter how arbitrary. The authorities keep them under regular surveillance. State bureaucrats control even smaller details of everyday life. The officials who push them around are answerable only to higher-ups, public or private. Either way, dissent and disobedience are punished. Informers report regularly to the authorities. All of this is supposed to be a very bad thing, and so it is. Although, it's nothing but a description of the modern workplace. The liberals and conservatives and libertarians who lament totalitarianism are phonies and hypocrites. That's brass tacks. There's more freedom in any moderately de-Stalinized dictatorship than there is in the ordinary American workplace. You find the same sort of hierarchy and discipline in an office or factory as you do in a prison or monastery. In fact, as Foucault and others have shown, prisons and factories came in at about the same time, and their operators consciously borrowed from each other's control techniques. A worker is a part-time slave. The boss says when you show up, when to leave, what to do in the meantime. He tells you how much work to do and how fast. He's free to carry his control to ex humiliating extremes, regulating, if he feels like it, the clothes you wear or how often you go to the bathroom. With a few exceptions, he can fire you for any reason or no reason. He has you spied on by snitches and supervisors. He amasses a dossier on every employee. Talking back is called insubordination, just as if a worker is a naughty child. And it not only gets you fired, it disqualifies you for unemployment compensation. Without necessarily endorsing it for, either, for them either, it is noteworthy that children at home and in school receive much the same treatment, justified in their case by the supposed immaturity. What does this say about their parents and teachers? The demeaning system of de uh, domination I've described rules over half the waking hours of a majority of uh, human beings for decades, for most of their lifespans. For certain purposes, it's not too misleading to call our system democracy or capitalism or better still, industrialism, but its real names are factory fascism and office oligarchy. Anyone, anybody who says uh, these people are free is lying or stupid. You are what you do. If you do boring, stupid, monotonous work, chances are you'll end up boring, stupid, and monotonous. Work is much better. Uh, work is a much better explanation for the creeping cretinization all around us than even significant moronizing, moronizing mechanisms such as television or education. People who are regimented all their lives, handed off to work from school and bracketed by the family in the beginning and the nursing home in the end, are habituated to hierarchy and psychologically enslaved. Their aptitude for autonomy is so atrophied that their fear of freedom is among their few rationally grounded phobias. Their obedience training at work carries over into families they start, thus reproducing the system in more ways than one, and into politics, culture, and everything else they touch. Once you drain the vitality from people at work, they'll likely submit to hierarchy and expertise in everything. They're used to it. We are so close to the world of work 
There we, go. we are so close to the world of work that we can't see what it does to us. We have to rely on outside observers from other times or other cultures to appreciate the extremity and the pathology of our present position. There was a time in our own past when the work ethic would have been incomprehensible, and perhaps Weber was onto something when he tied it uh, tied its appearance to a religion, Calvinism, which, if it emerged today instead of four centuries ago, would immediately and appropriately be labeled a cult. Be that as it may, we have only to draw upon the wisdom of antiquity to put work in perspective. The ancients saw work for what it, what it is, and their view prevailed. The Calvinist cranks notwithstanding until overthrown by industrialism, but not before receiving the endorf, uh, endorsement of its prophets. Let's pretend for a moment that work doesn't turn people into uh, stultified submissives. Let's uh, pretend, in defiance of any plausible psychology and the ideology of its boosters, that it has no effect on the formation of character. And let's pretend that work isn't as boring and tiring and humiliating as we all know it really is. Even then, work would still make a mockery of all humanistic and democratic aspirations, just because it usurps so much of our time. Socrates said that manual labors make bad friends— and bad citizens, because they have no time to fulfill the responsibilities of friendship and citizenship. He was right. Because of work, no matter what we do, we keep looking at our watches. The only thing free about so-called free time is that it doesn't cost the boss anything. Free time is mostly devoted to getting ready for work, going to work, returning from work, and recovering from work. Free time is a euphemism for the peculiar way labor as a factor of production not only transports itself at its own expense to and from the workplace, but assumes primary responsibility for its own maintenance and repair. Coal and steel don't do that. Lathes and typewriters don't do that, but workers do. No wonder Edward G. Robinson in one of its gangster movies exclaimed, work is for saps. Both Plato and and Xenophon, a tribute to Socrates, and obviously share with him an awareness of the destructive effects of work on the worker as a citizen and a human being. Herodotus identified contempt for work as an attribute of the classical Greeks at the zenith of their culture. To take only one Roman example, Cicero said that whoever gives his labor for money sells himself and puts himself in the rank of slaves. His candor is now rare, but Contemporary primitive societies, which we won't look, uh, won't look, uh, won't, which we are won't to look down upon, uh, won't uh, have provided spokesmen who have enlightened Western anthropologists. The Kapau, uh, the Kapaku of Western Iran, according to Pospisil, uh, my my diction today, have a conception of balance in life and accordingly work only every other day, the day of rest designed to regain the lost power and health. Our ancestors, even as late as the 18th century, when they were far along the path to our present um, predicament, at least were aware of what we've forgotten, the underside of industrialization, the religious devotion to St. Monday, thus establishing a de facto five-day week, 150 to 200 years before its legal consecration, was the despair of the earliest uh, fact owner, uh, factory owners. They took a long time in submitting to the tyranny of the bell, predecessor of the time clock. In fact, it was necessary for a generation or two to replace adult males with women accustomed to obedience and children who could be molded to fit industrial needs. Even the exploited peasants of the ancient regime rested substantial time back from their landlord's work. According to Lefergue, a fourth of the French peasants' calendar was devoted to Sundays and holidays. And Chayanov's figures from villages in Tsarist Russia? Hardly a progressive society. Likewise, show a fourth or fifth of peasants' days devoted to repose. Controlling for productivity, we're obviously far behind these backward societies. The exploited musics would wonder why any of us are working at all. So should we. To grasp the full enormity of our deterioration, however, consider the earliest condition of humanity. Without government or property, when we wandered as hunters and gatherers, Hobbes surmised that life was then nasty, brutish, and short. 
Others assume that life was a desperate, unremitting struggles for subsistence. A war waged against harsh nature with death and disaster, awaiting the unlucky or anyone who is unequal to the challenge of the struggle for existence. Actually, that was all projection of fears for the collapse of government authority over the communities accustomed to doing without it, like the England of Hobbes during the Civil War. Hobbes's compatriots had already encountered alternative forms of society which illustrated other ways of life. In North America particularly, but already these were too remote from their experience to be understandable. In North America, partic- uh, pff, the lower orders closer to the condition of the Indians understood it better and often found it attractive. Throughout the 17th century, English settlers defected to, uh, to North American indigenous tribes or captured in war refused to return. But the Native Americans no more defected to white settlements than Germans climbed the Berlin Wall from the West. The survival of the fittest version, the Thomas Huxley version of Darwinism, was a better account of economic conditions in Victorian England than it was of natural selection. As the anarchist Kropotkin showed in his book Mutual Aid, a factor of evolution, Kropotkin, after all, was a trained scientist, a geographer who had ample and voluntary opportunity for fieldwork whilst exiled in Siberia, knew what he was talking about. Like most social and political theory, the story Hobbes and his successors told was really unacknowledged autobiography. The uh, the anthropologist Marshall Salins, surveying the data on contemporary hunter-gatherers, exploded the Hobbesian myth in an article entitled The Original Affluent Society. They work a lot less than we do. Their work is hard to distinguish from what we regard as play, Salins concluded that hunters and gatherers work less than we do, and rather than a continuous travail, the food quest is intermittent, leisure abundant, and there's a greater amount of sleep in the daytime per capita per year than any other condition of society. They worked an average of four hours a day, assuming they were working at all. Their labor, as it appears to us, was skilled labor, which exercised their physical and intellectual capacities. Unskilled labor on any large scale, as Salin says, is impossible except under industrialism. Thus, it satisfied Friedrich Schiller's definition of play, the only occasion on which man realizes his complete humanity by giving full play to both sides of their twofold nature, thinking and feeling. As he put it, the animal works when deprivation is the mainspray of its uh, mainspring of its activity, and it plays when the fullness of its strength is the mainspring, when superabundant life is its own stimulus to activity. A modern version, dubiously developmental, is Abram, uh, Abraham Maslow, uh, Maslow's counterposition of deficiency and growth. The motiv- uh, motivation. Play and freedom are, as regards production, coextensive. Even Marx, who belongs, for all his good intentions, in the productivist pantheon, observed that the realm of freedom does not commence until the point is passed where labor under the compulsion of necessity and external utility is required. He never could quite bring himself to identify this happy circumstance as what it is. The abolition of work. It's rather anomalous, after all, to be pro-worker and anti-work. But we can be. The aspiration to go backwards or forwards to a life without work is evident in every serious social or cultural history of pre-industrial Europe. Among them, M. Dorothy George's England in Transition and Peter Burke's popular culture in early modern Europe. Also pertinent is Daniel Bell's essay, Work and Its uh, Discontents. The first text, I believe, to refer to the revolt against work in so many words. And had it been understood, an important correction to the complacency ordinarily associated with the volume in which it was collected, the end of ideology. Neither critics nor celebrants have noticed that Bell's end of ideology thesis signaled not the end of social unrest, but the beginning of a new uncharted phase unconstrained and uninformed by ideology. It was Seymour Lipset in Political Man, Not Bell, who announced at the same time that the fundamentalist, uh, the fundamental problems of the Industrial Revolution had been solved. Only a few years before the post- or meta-industrial disc, uh, discontents of college students drove Lipset from UC Berkeley to the relative and temporary tranquility of Harvard. As Bell notes, Adam Smith in The Wealth of Nations, for all of his enthusiasm for the market and division of labor, was more alert to and frankly, more honest about the seamy side of work than 
Ayn Rand or any of the Chicago economists or any of Smith's modern epigones could ever or would ever be. As Smith observed, the understandings of the greater part of men are necessarily formed by their ordinary employments. The man whose life is spent in performing a few simple operations has no occasion to exert his understanding, generally becomes as stupid and ignorant as it is possible for a human creature to become. Here, in a few blunt words, is my critique of work. Bell, writing in 1956, the golden age of Eisenhower imbecility and American self-satisfaction identified the unorganized, unorganizable malaise of the 1970s and since... The, uh, the no one political tendency is able to harness the one identified in HEW's report, uh, report work in America, the one which cannot be exploited and so is ignored. That problem is the revolt against work. It does not figure in any other text by any other laissez-faire economist, Friedman, Rothbard, Posner, because in their terms, they used to say on Star Trek, it does not compute. If these objections, informed by the love of liberty, fail to persuade humanists of a utilitarian or even paternalist turn, there are others which they can't disregard. Work is hazardous to your health. In fact, work is mass murder or genocide, directly or indirectly. Work will kill most of the people who, who read or listen to these words. Between 14,000 and 25,000 workers are killed annually in America on the job. Over 2 million disabled. 20 to 25 million are injured every year. And these figures are based on conservative estimation of what constitutes a work-related injury. Thus, they don't count the half million cases of occupational disease every year. I looked at at least one medical textbook on occupational diseases, which was 1,200 pages long. Even that barely scratched the surface. The available statistics count the obvious cases like the 100,000 minors who have black lung disease, of whom 4,000 die every year, a much higher fatality rate than, say, that of HIV AIDS, for instance, which gets media attention. This reflects the unvoiced assumption that HIV AIDS afflicts perverts who could control their depravity, whereas coal mining is a sacrosanct activity beyond question. What the statistics don't show is that tens of millions of people have their lifespan shortened by work, which is all that homicide means after all. Consider the doctors who work themselves to death in their 50s. Consider all other workaholics. Even if you aren't killed or crippled while actually working, you very well might be while going to work. Coming from work, looking for work, or trying to forget about work. The vast majority of victims of the automobile are either doing one of those work obligatory activities or else fall afoul of those who do them. To this augmented body count must be added the victims of auto industrial pollution and work induced alcoholism and drug addiction. Both cancer and heart disease are modern afflictions normally traceable directly or indirectly to work. Work then institutionalizes homicide as a way of life. People think that the Cambodians were crazy for exterminating themselves, but are we any different? The Pol Pot, had a regi uh, the Pol Pot regime at least had a vision, however blurred of an egalitarian society. We kill people in the six-figure range at least in order to sell Big Macs and Cadillacs to the survivors. Our 40 or 50,000 annual highway fatalities are victims, not martyrs. They died for nothing. Or rather, they died for work, but work is nothing to die for. Bad news for liberals. Regulatory tinkering is useless in this life and death, uh, death context. The Federal Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, was designed to police the core part of the problem, workplace safety. Even before Reagan and the Supreme Court stifled it, OSHA was a farce. At previous, and by current standards, generous Carter-era uh, Carter funding levels, a workplace could expect a random visit from an OSHA inspector once every 46 years. State control of the economy? It's no solution either. Work is, if anything, more dangerous in the state socialist countries than it is here. 
thousands of Russia, sh- Russian workers were killed or injured before um, building the uh, while building the Moscow subway. Stories reverberate about covered up Soviet nuclear disasters, which make Times Beach and Three Mile Island look like elementary school air raid drills. On the other hand, deregulation fashionable currently won't help and will probably hurt from a health and safety standpoint among others work was at its worst in the days when the economy was mostly closely approximated by laissez-faire historians like eugene genovese have argued uh, persuasively that antebellum slavery uh, slavery apologists insisted factory wage workers in northern america states and in europe were worse off than southern plantation slaves No rearrangement of relations among bureaucrats and businessmen seemed to make much difference at the point of production. Serious enforcement of even the rather vague standards enforceable in theory by OSHA would probably bring the economy to a standstill. The enforcers apparently appreciate this since they don't try and crack down on most malefactors. What I've said so far ought not to be that controversial. Many workers are fed up with work. There's high and rising rates of absenteeism, turnover, employee theft, sabotage, strikes, and overall gold bricking on the job. There may be some movement towards a conscious and not just visceral rejection of work. And yet, the prevalent feeling, universal among bosses and their agents, and also widespread among, work, uh, widespread among workers themselves, is that work itself is inevitable and necessary. I disagree. It's now possible to abolish work and replace it insofar as it serves useful purposes with a multitude of new kinds of free activities. To abolish work requires going at it from two directions, quantitative and qualitative. On the one hand, on the quantitative side, we have to cut down massively on the amount of work being done. At present, most work is useless or worse And we should simply just get rid of it. On the other hand, and I think this is the crux of the matter and the revolutionary new departure, we have to take what useful work remains and transform it into a pleasing variety of game-like and craft-like pastimes, indistinguishable from other pleasurable pastimes, except that they happen to yield useful end products. Surely that shouldn't make them less enticing to do. Then all the artificial barriers of power and property could come down. Creation could become recreation, and we could all stop being afraid of each other. Now, I don't suggest that most work is salvageable in this way, but then most work isn't worth trying to save. Only a small and diminishing fraction of work serves any useful purpose independent of the defense and reproduction of the work system and its political and legal appendages. 20 years ago, Paul and Percival Goodman estimated that just 5% of the work then being done, presumably the figure, if accurate, is lower now, would satisfy our, uh, satisfy our minimal needs for food, clothing, and shelter. This was only an educated guess, but the main point is quite clear. Directly or indirectly, most work serves the unproductive purposes of commerce or social control. Right off the bat, we can liberate tens of millions of salesmen, soldiers, Managers, cops, stockbrokers, clergymen, bankers, lawyers, teachers, landlords, security guards, ad men, and everyone who works for them. There's a snowball effect since every time you uh, uh, every time you idle some big shot, you liberate their flunkies and underlings. Thus, the economy implodes. Forty percent of the workforce are white collar workers most of whom have some of the most tedious and idiotic jobs ever concocted. Entire industries, insurance and banking and real estate, for instance, consist of nothing but useless paper shuffling. It's no accident that the tertiary sector, the service sector, is growing while the secondary sector industry, stagnates in the primary sector, agriculture, never disappears because work is unnecessary except to those whose power it secures. Workers are shifted from relatively useful to relatively useless occupations as a measure to assure public order. Anything is better than nothing. That's why you can't go home just because you finish early. They want your time, enough of it to make you theirs. even if they have no use for most of it. Otherwise, 
Why hasn't the average work week gone down by more than a few minutes in the past 50 years? Next, we can take a meat cleaver to production work itself. No more war production, junk food, feminine hygiene deodorant, and above all, <clears throat> no more auto industry to speak of. An occasional Stanley Steamer or Model T might be all right, but the auto eroticism on which such pest holes as Detroit and Los Angeles depend on is, well, frankly, out of the question. Already, without even trying, we've virtually solved the energy crisis, the environmental crisis, and assorted other insoluble social problems. Finally, we must do away with far and away the largest occupation, the one with the longest hours, the lowest pay, and some of the most tedious tasks around. I refer to housewives doing housework and child rearing. By abolishing wage labor and achieving full unemployment, we undermine the sexual division of labor. The nuclear family as we know it is an inevitable ad adaptation to the division of labor imposed by modern wage work. Like it or not, as things have been for the last century or two, it is economically rational for, the, uh, for one partner to bring home the bacon and for the other partner to do the shit work provided with a haven in a heartless world and for the children to be marched off to youth concentration camps called schools. Primarily to keep them out of someone's hair, but still under control. But incidentally to acquire the habits of obedience and punctuality so necessary for workers. If you would be rid of patriarchy, get rid of the nuclear family whose unpaid shadow work, as even Ilyich says, makes possible the work system that makes it necessary. Bound up with this no-nuke strategy is the abolition of childhood and the closing of the schools. There are more full-time students than full-time workers in this country. We need children as teachers, not students. They have a lot to contribute to the ludic revolution because they're better at playing than grown-ups are. Adults and children are not identical, but they will become equal through interdependence. Only play can bridge the generation gap. I haven't as yet even mentioned the possibility of cutting way down on the little work that remains by automating and cybernizing it. All the scientists and engineers and technicians freed from bothering with war research and planned obsolescence would then have a good time devising means to eliminate fatigue and tedium and danger from activities like mining. Undoubtedly, they'll find other projects to amuse themselves with, too. Perhaps they'll set up worldwide all-inclusive multimedia communication systems or found space colonies. Perhaps, I mean, I myself am no, uh, I'm no gadget freak. I am. Um, I wouldn't care to live in a push-button paradise. I would. I don't want robot slaves to do everything. I want to do things myself. There is, I think, a place for labor-saving technology. The historical and prehistorical record is not encouraging. When productive technology went from hunting, gathering, to agriculture and onto industry, work increased while skills and self-determination uh, self diminished. The further evolution of industrialism has accentuated what Harry Braverman called the degradation of work. Intelligent observers have always been aware of this. John Stuart Mill wrote that all labor-saving inventions ever devised haven't saved a moment's labor. Karl Marx wrote that it would be possible to write a history of the inventions made since 1830 for the sole purpose of supplying capital with weapons against the revolts of the working class. The enthusiastic technophiles, Saint-Simon, uh, Saint Comte, Lenin, B.F., Skinner, have always been unabashed authoritarians, also, which is to say, technocrats. We should be more than skeptical about the promises of the computer mystics. They work like dogs. Chances are, if they have their way, so will the rest of us. But if they have any particularized contributions more readily subordinated to human purposes than the run of high tech, give them a hearing. What I really want to see is work turned into play. A first step is to disregard the notions of a job and an occupation. 
even when activities that are already ha already have some ludic content uh Loose, amount, uh, loose most of it by reducing to jobs which certain people and only those people are forced to do the exclusion of all else. Is it not odd that farm workers toil painfully in the fields while their air-conditioned masters go home every weekend and putter about in their gardens? Under a system of permanent revelry, we, wit we will witness a golden age of the dilettante, uh, dilettante, which will put the Renaissance to shame. There won't be any more jobs, just things to do and people to do them. The secret of turning work into play, as Charles, uh, as Charles Fourier demonstrated, is to arrange useful activities to take advantage of whatever it is that various people at various times, in fact, enjoy doing. To make it possible for some people to do the things they could enjoy, it will be, just it will be enough to just eradicate the irrationalities and distortions which afflict these activities when they are reduced to work. I, for instance, would enjoy doing some, not too much, teaching. But I don't want coerced students, and I don't care to suck up to pathetic pedants for tenure. Second, there are some things people like to do from time to time, but not for too long, and certainly not all the time. You might enjoy babysitting for a few hours in order to share the company of kids, but not as much as their parents do. The parents, meanwhile, profoundly appreciate the time to themselves that you free up for them, although they'd get fretful if parted from their progeny for too long. These differences among individuals are what make a life of free play possible. The same principle applies to many other areas of activity, especially the primal ones. Thus, many people enjoy cooking when they can practice it seriously at their leisure, but not when they're just fueling up human bodies for work. Third, other things being equal, some things that are unsatisfying if done by yourself or in unpleasant surroundings at the orders of an overlord are enjoyable at least for a while if these circumstances are changed, this is probably true to an extent of all work. People deploy their otherwise wasted ingenuity to make a game of the least inviting drudge jobs as best they can. Activities that appeal to some people don't always appeal to all others, but everyone at least potentially has a variety of interests and an interest in variety. As the saying goes, anything wants. Foyer was the master at speculating how aberrant and perverse penchants could be put to use in a post-civilized society, what he called harmony. He thought the emperor Nero would have turned out all right if as a child he could have indulged his taste for bloodshed by working in a slaughterhouse. Small children who notoriously relish wallowing in filth could be organized in little hordes to clean toilets and empty the garbage with medals awarded to the outstanding. I'm not arguing for these precise examples, but for the underlying principle, which I think makes perfect sense as one dimension of an overall revolutionary transformation. Bear in mind that we don't have to take today's work just as we find it and match it up with the proper people, some of whom would have to be perverse indeed. If technology has a role in all of this, it's less to automate work out of existence than to open up new realms for re- and recreation. To some extent, we may want to return to handicrafts, which William Morris considered a probable and desirable upshot of a communist revolution. Art would be taken back from the snobs and the collectors, abolished as a specialized department catering to an elite audience, and its qualities of beauty and creation restored to in uh, in integral life from which they were stolen by work. It's a sobering thought that the Grecian urns we write odes about and showcase in museums were used in their time to store olive oil. I doubt our everyday artifacts will fare as well in the future, if there is one. The point is that there's no such thing as progress in the world of work. If anything, it's the opposite. We shouldn't hesitate to pill for the past for what it has to offer. The ancients lose nothing, yet we're enriched. The reinvention of daily life means marching off the edge of our maps. There is, it is true, more suggestive speculation than most people suspect. Besides Foyer and Morris, and even a hint here and there in Marx and the writings of Kropotkin and syndicalists Bataille and Puget, anarcho-communists Old Berkman and New Bookchin, the Goodman brothers' communitas is exemplary for illustrating what forms follow from given functions and purpose, and there is something to be gleaned from the often hazy heralds of alternative, appropriate, intermediate, convivial technology like Schumacher and especially Illich, once you disconnect their fog machines, of course. The Situationists, as represented by Vanagheim's Revolutionary of Daily Life and the Situationist International Anthology, are so ruthlessly lucid as to be exhilarating. 
even if they never did quite square the endorsement of the rule of the workers' council with the abolition of work, better their incongruity, though, than any extant version of leftism, whose devotees look to be the last champions of work. For if there were no work, there would be no workers. And without workers, who would the left have to organize? So the abolitionists would be largely on their own. No one can say what would result from unleashing the creative power uh, stultified by work. Anything can happen. The tiresome debater's problem of freedom versus necessity with its theological overtones resolves itself practically once the uh, production of use values is coextensive with the consumption of delightful play activity. Life will become a game, or rather many games, but not as it is now, a zero-sum game. An optimal sexual encounter is the paradigm of productive play. The participants potentiate each other's pleasures. Nobody keeps score. Everybody wins. The more you give, the more you get. In ludic life, the best of sex will diffuse into the better part of daily life. Generalized play leads to the libidinization of life. Sex, in turn, can become less urgent and less desperate, more playful. If we play our cards right, we can all get more out of life than we put into it, but only if we play for keeps. No one should ever work. Workers of the world, relax. All right. What do we got? There you go. I Bob is le legitimately Oh god. Yeah, I just saw that. Um Bob is legitimately the 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 spiritual father of the anti-work movement. He's 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 he's, he's it's daddy. Um So, let's see if it fucking make echoes. It actually stops. Why would you put that on that clip, on the clip page? All right, cool. All right, it's processing. For two, it's been having issues. It's been having issues. Yeah. Yeah, how is black economic empowerment communist? Big era. That's B-E-E. -E. It's black, and, uh, black uh, uh, economic empowerment. It's a uh, policy in South Africa. It was it was part of the um, reconciliation process um, and redress uh, redress policies that were instituted in South Africa to uh, to attempt to overcome the inequities caused by apartheid. That's what BEE is. So explain to me how BEE is the um, 
is a classless, stateless society that where the workers own the means of production. Please, please explain to me that that to me. How is that communism? You could at least make an argument for vanguardism, but you can't argue for communism. Uh, resolution, I'm not a huge fan. Not a fan. He um, he, he wrote a, uh, an excerpt. He wrote a, an endorsement for a book that is absolute psychotic trash. And he, can, he, he called it like a brilliant new avenue of intellectual like insight. And it's going to create new like fields of study. Um, basically the book was how, um, anarchism is essentially an Illuminati conspiracy. I'm not, I'm not fucking around here. I'm not fucking around. It's the Freemasonic and Illuminati origins of anarchism, socialism, and communism. Yeah. And Graeber wrote like a paragraph saying how brilliant this book was and how it's going to open up new avenues of academic study and shit like that. And yeah, it was like the next devil. Like it was dude, Kat and I went through this book over a weekend. It's a fucking nightmare of a book and fucking Graber's like literally like, look, either, either Graber didn't read shit and he's just like, yeah, fucking, you know, here's a paragraph, slap it on your book. Or somebody he knew called in a favor, and he's like, eh, something innocuous here, put it on your book. Or he fucking read the damn book, and that makes me even, like, way more concerned. Um... Uh. Uh, the book is called, um, the, here, here, resolution. The book is called the occult features of anarchism with attention to the conspiracy of Kings and the conspiracy of peoples by uh, uh, Erica Leglisi or Legalese or something like that. Um, and This is surely the most creative and exciting and possibly the most important work to come out on either anarchism or occultism in many a year. It should give rise to a whole new field of intellectual study. Dr. David Graeber, professor of anthropology at the London School of Economics and Political Science and the author of works including Debt the First 5,000 Years. And I'm, I'm not kidding you. It's, it's, yeah, right, Kaboos? Um... In the 19th century, anarchists were accused of conspiracy of governments, afraid of revolution, blah, blah, blah. The Illuminati were a network of intellectuals who argued for self-government, blah, blah, blah. Luglazy works with primary and secondary sources in multiple languages, blah, blah, blah. Illustrate the actual relationship between revolutionism, panthe pantheistic occult philosophy, and the clandestine fraternity. Exploring hidden correspondences between anarchism, renaissance magic, and new age movements. Legalese also advances critical scholarship in regarding leftist, a leftist attachment to secular politics inspired by blah 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 i'm not kidding you go ahead and read it like go ahead and read it it's it's crazy on toast uh karina of course you've just fucking unseated yeah you're gonna you're most assuredly gonna have like mood swings 
dudes that have low testosterone start having fluctuations in mood. They get depression. They get bouts of like depression for no reason whatsoever. You are literally crushing your, uh, um, your testosterone levels right now. So like, yeah, there's going to be, there's going to be some mood swings. There's going to be some crying bouts. It's, it's going to be a thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, most assuredly. Yeah, you, you fuck around with hormone levels, mood swings. As a lot of pointed out, it's just pure puberty, right? You fuck around with hormone levels, mood swings. It's just a, it's just an inherent entity. It's an inherent aspect of it, of changing hormone levels. So, it's gonna happen. Um, yeah, resolution. Like I, like I said, Graber's done like decent work in other areas, but that like sincerely put like a, a like a pin that put an asterisk on Graber for me. I was like, what in the fuck is he talking about? Because Kat and I went through that book, and we're like, this is crazy. Uh, yeah, like, this this book is wacky as shit, man. And Graber's like, this is fucking brilliant and exciting. It's like, e either either he just signed off on some shit, or, like, I, I don't know. I don't know. But, like, I don't know how his quote ended up on that book. But the fact that his quote is on that book really freaks me the fuck out about him in general. Because that book is that shit um buddhist i don't know i don't know it's been maintained for years that maybe he did maybe he didn't i've heard i've heard i've heard multiple sides of that story i've never heard any like primary accounts that that like there's too many there's too much conflicting data on that i don't know he may have though buddhist he may have bob's enough of an asshole to have done something like that like when I when I talk about Bob Black being an asshole, he's an asshole, right? Like this isn't like a friendly. Oh, he's our fucking dude, Bob. He's not. He's an asshole. All right. That's entirely within the realm of him, for sure. Like I I would not put that pot past Bob Black, in any way, shape, or form. Know that. Yeah. I mean, my vision of, hey, Viva, th I need to turn on my alerts again. Thank you for the resub, Viva. Um, let me turn on my alerts. There we go. Back on. Um, <sighs> All right. Triv, Trivana. Anarchism isn't prescriptive. I don't have a vision for the future. There is no project of projects, right? Marx had a phrase, uh, don't write recipes for the cook shops of the future. Anarchists have, there is no project of projects. So sort of my way of saying like, okay, once you understand anarchism and you understand how it's a network of individuals acting autonomously and coordinating and, uh, uh, coordinating and organizing themselves in a distributed fashion and coming together to form free associative groups that then collaborate and structure and organize themselves, you start to grasp the concept behind there is no project to projects. If I teach you anarchistic organizing techniques, say there's just this room full of people, right? 
Everybody, everybody knows how to do consensus decision making. Everybody knows how to do a distributed network. Everybody understands the, the brass tacks of organizing and delegative processes behind anarchistic organizing methodologies, right? When I leave the room and then I come back in a week, I don't know what you guys have, will have gotten up to. I know how you will have gotten there. But I won't necessarily know the end form of how of what you chose to do. So mine personally, intermediary, I'd like to see a re-democratization of the workplace. So syndicalist aspects. I could I could get down with some syndicalism. I'd love to see a, re, a reordering, a redemocratization of the workplace, a re-empowerment of the labor force. Um, long term, yeah, I want fully, uh, I want fully automated luxury, uh, like queer space anarcho-communism, right? I want the whole, I want the whole nine yards. I want all of it. I want a fully liberated, post-scarcity, automated society in which humanity gets to just create to their heart's content without any oppressive or coercive hierarchical uh, regimes. Yeah. I want the whole nine yards, but that's not happening in my lifetime. So I'm okay with that. Like, I, I, I'm i not delusional. I'm not a utopian. Anarchists aren't utopians. By definition, we aren't utopians. Um, but we are idealists. So philosophically speaking, right, we, we literally fall under the category of idealist. Um, but yeah, I don't have that sort of, there is no project to project for anarchists. So there you go. There's your answer. Uh, uh, Zippy, eventually what happens is you conduct a bad faith, uh, bad faith vote. If, um, if an individual or group of individuals are attempting to just stall on the principle of stalling alone and they cannot put forth a good faith interaction or explanation as to why they have viable complaints or um, uh, or opposition to what's at, uh, attempting to be for, uh, put forward, then a bad faith vote can be, um, can be brought forward and you can nullify them. Under a fluid democracy or a liquid democracy, Carpe, we already could have. Except they're representative rather than delegative. No. And who made that? Oh, a lot. I made that black brass tax fucking. Um. Uh. You're welcome, Trev. Um, and keep in mind, that's my answer, right? In the words of Emma Goldman, anarchism is a network of ideas and we much prefer it that way. In no way, shape, or form is anarchism monolithic. If anybody tells you there is a prescriptive form of anarchism, they're probably wrong. The only exceptions to that are that like contradictory statements, right? Like, um, the, oh, you can be pro capitalism and, and an anarchist. No, you can't, right? Anarchism is at its core about a critique of coercive hierarchies and oppressive elements, right? Capitalism is fundamentally a coercive hierarchy, right? Like, you can't, there are some things that you just can't rectify within anarchism. But for the most part, when you're talking egalitarian um, enlightenment principles and you're over on the left, there's various flavors and insights and writings and philosophers and political scientists that have talked about anarchism and waxed poetically and thought introspectively and discussed, argued, and debated. There's a lot of opinions. There's a lot of ideas. There's a lot of... It's a big network, and we much prefer it that way. Um, 
So, you know, there's, there's, there's a few prescriptions. You can't be a capitalist and be an anarchist. It's just it's not a, it's just not a thing you can do. Uh, what do you got, fucking weather? I wither. Um, <coughs> how far in are you, Trev? Like, I mean, you're reading. Like, do you are you attempting to understand anarchism, and you're starting with like Kropotkin and Bakunin and Proudhon? And fucking like the individualists and then the, the, the mutualists and then the individualists. Like, are you, are you still at the, I'm trying to understand anarchism stage of reading? <laughs> Rev mountains exist. Fucking imagine. Um, yeah, I, I resolution. I don't recommend it. I don't recommend it. I don't recommend going to the to the names until you decide you want to be a theory head. I don't I don't think it's I think it's counterproductive. Yeah. Um So, yeah, Triv, if if you're still at the like I'm trying to understand anarchism stage, go with the government of no one um by Ruth Kinna. Here. Start here. Government of No One, The Theory and Practice of Anarchism by Ruth Kenna. Start there. That's that's a solid starting place for you. Yeah. Um if if you're like, you know, if you're, if you're fucking, if you're a glutton for punishment. Peter Marshall is a recognized expert on this, right? Like Peter Marshall demanding the impossible. Um, Cricks, unless you want to be a theory head. It's no, there's really no need. Honestly, there isn't. I don't, I don't think there is. Well, meat toad, I would, that's a specific type. That's, that's, that's a, a targeted um, that's a targeted version of like anarchism, which is uh, prescriptive, which I, I lean, I lean away from, especially doing introductions, right? Like I, you need to understand anarcho anarchism. I, I would go with that. <laughs> Anarchity, the Ruth Kenna book is very good. Yeah. It's, it's a good place to start. It's a very good place to start. Um, and it just depends where you want to branch out and you'll, from Ruth, you'll figure out a few areas. And if anarcho-communism is your field, then you fucking, you'll, you'll branch out from, from Ruth really quickly. Right? Like that's, that's pretty simple, but you need the basics. And I think Ruth does a pretty good job of getting you the basics. Um, like a lot of the basics. Like even charts of like intersectionality and shit right at the bottom level at the bottom they're the last person you want in the room <laughs> I will take I will take the uh, direct action anarchist um, who then knows learn some theory of course, I'm speaking from a bias because that's that's the direction I came, right? Um, go do it. Go do it in the streets. Go practice it. Go learn it. Go live it. 
then go learn the theory. But I, I, I will take the, the direct action anarchist over the theory head anarchist 10 times out of 10. Yeah. You're welcome, Craigs. Uh, Triv, anarcho syndicalism is very practical. It's one of the most um, achievable ones right now. <clears throat> um, hey, we got plenty of theory heads with her. We got plenty of theory heads. We don't need any more. But again, if you want your theory head badge, there's, um, for those of you who don't know, there's a reading list. Um, I think it's just reading or reading list. I always forget. I forget the command. It's reading, right? Yeah, it's reading. Um, in chat, there's a reading list. There's a link to, um, my website. And so there's like the just starting out area. There's the looking for in-depth there's kids books on anarchism and then there's the going for your theory head ba merit badge. <clears throat> Here's some names you just need to read. And I need to add a couple more names to that. I thought I thought of a few that I want to add to that. I'm in Portland. They don't direct action here, do they? I have never heard of see Portland anarchists are notorious theory heads. They very rarely get in the streets. It's it's one of the failings of the Portland anarchist scene is they're they're very inactive on the streets. Um, if they could rectify that, and maybe if they could if they could become a little more active in the streets, then maybe a fucking PDX. God bless them. I I have nothing but respect for fucking the Portland uh, for the PDX anarchist scene. They're hilarious. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> uh, thoughts on Nicola Bombati or uh, Carlo Otto Patel? Um, Nicola was a fascist. Like, straight-up fascist, right? Like, Nicola was a fascist, and uh, Carl, uh, Carl Otto Patel was a national Bolshevik? Yeah, wait. Babachi, Babachi was the, 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 the communist-turned-fascist, and then Otto was the, the straight-up, like, national Bolshevik one, right? Yeah. So, thoughts on them? Fuck them both. There we go. Um... Level, not off the top of my head, though, Bookchin probably t talks about it a little bit by extension. Yeah, Rev, I, I, I post gang rise up. Um, wither, st egoism, sternerism, it's completely amoral. Foucaultian power dynamic analysis leads to amorality. Not immorality, but amorality. So, like, uh, uh, immediate undermine. Just sweep the leg. It's like sterner. Anarchism leads to moralism. Sterner. And? Um... Yeah, I do. Tech support. I do. Send it to me somewhere. Send me a link. Send me... It's just... Yeah, tech support. Get it to me. I'll give it a look. Um... Looking at the kids' books on the list, I can't wait to read some of these to my nephew someday. Yeah. Reading list. Pop it. Uh, I got a couple of these in-house. 
a resolution if you want to. Um, I've got I've got um, a rule is to break, and I've got um, what else? What other ones do I have? What is what's the other one I have? Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, stretch. Oh, <laughs> fucking China being communist is hilarious. You're adorable. Yeah, because Dengism is for sure communist. Yeah, definitely. Um, woo! It's the people's McDonald's. I have Zippy. Let me go. Let me go up. They should just read the grown-up list. Skeptic, you need to calm down with the fucking obsession with the sex workers, man. It's getting a little creepy. It's getting a little weird. Triv, take care of yourself. Yeah, this one's all about uh, a bunch of animals setting up a squat. I've read this one on uh, on stream before. We've We've done this one. It's just, it's just, dude, just take it down. Oh, I'm not. Marcus, that's, I wouldn't even. It's okay, Aka. It's okay. I I know you don't, skeptic. <laughs> I know you don't. <laughs> I'm happy for you, skeptic. I'm happy that you got some life experience. I'm happy that you got some stuff out of your system. I'm happy you learned to explore the world. I'm happy you got to see a new avenue and aspect and uh, uh, like m method of being. But dude. Stop running around yelling the like fucking I'm the sex workers to the to the rafters. That's a little weird. It's gonna weird some people out. Just know that. Right? Like I'm 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 just I'm your bro here. I'm telling you, you know, when you tell these stories when you go back home, don't be like, oh my god, Cuba was amazing and I fucked like five hookers. That's not going to make people think you're sane. All right, like that's just keep that to yourself for a while, you know, just keep that portion of the story to yourself. Yeah, 
you literally told me they... Never mind. I don't even care anymore. Why would I read the the Bolshevist manifest, manifesto? Have you have you read the Structural Anarchist Manifesto by Bellamare? Let's see, Patel. Probably Patel's National Bolshevist Manifesto, given your obsession with him. Oh, good. It starts off with a fucking song of vision. That's not creepy. Talking about waves, uh, flags waving in rhythm with the tramp of marching uh, feet. Yeah, that's always creepy. Keep in mind, this is a German talking about this, too, by the way. Oh, look, an advocation for nationalism. Cringe. Oh, look, revolution. Appealing to young people for revolutionary nationalism. That's never created a lot of bloodshed. The problem, the, the, the problem with um, fascism, I'm just reading through this really quickly. The problem with fascism wasn't fascism. The problem with fascism was that it was anti-Marxist. Just so you guys know. Not for, not reformed national socialism, but a block of uncompromi uh, uncompromising young nationalist forces in Germany with steadfast socialist will, unwavering nationalist faith, recognition of the practical situation conferred through Versailles, and fighting comradeship with the KPD.
Okay, so outline. Here we go. Oh God, Volksic community. Oh, uh, we commit ourselves to the Volk as the natural ethnic cultural community. In contrast to ethnically destructive Western civilization, we commit ourselves to the intrinsic meaning of German folkdom. Oh yeah, this is a great document. Thanks, thanks for recommending I read this. This is definitely not not one of those creepy moments where you're like, um, homie. Oh, look, national ownership of land and soil. Hmm, that goes well every time. Immediate extensive settlement of the East with expropriation of large estates. What does East mean here? We've got annotations. Oh, just the, not even like East Germany. We're talking like the, sh oh yeah. We're talking about the shit that fucking the Germans wanted to claim also. Like all of it, just, it's all ours. State monopolization of foreign trade. The situation today calls for, wait for it, wait for it. The situation today calls for, are you ready? Are you ready? Struggle for a racially appropriate religiosity attuned to the German people as a precondition for the Volkschic uh, unity. This motherfucker is still here. <laughs> hey, what was this guy? What was this? good book? Good book. This this fucking psychopath says. There it is. Fucking good book. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, they're still here. Zippy, they're still here. Yeah. Let's just say it's got the question verbiage in it. As in, you know, what to do about the question. Yep, yep. 
If it honks like a goose and it steps like a goose. Yep, fuck this. Um, wait. Book is fucking. Jesus Christ. Do they really need to fucking iterate it that way? This book is ridiculous. The class struggle is not an invention of the Jew Marx. Alright, I'm done looking at this piece of trash. I'll get right on that. <laughs> I'll get right on that. Um, no, uh, I do not stream on any other platforms. I'm back to chat now. Um, though there is a YouTube page, but it's mostly used as an archive for stuff that has already occurred. Um, No. Nope. Anybody who's trained in cybernetic theory, uh, uh, cybernetic theory and or information technology understands the power of a distributed network. There is not an IT nerd of the land over um, or a cyberneticist who doesn't understand the use, uh, use uh, the utility of hierarchical organizational structures and distributed network functions. So as far as topological formats go, how things are organized uh, in a network, um, anarchism proves itself a more viable option every day that goes forward. And things like I2P and Tor prove that, iterate out that even further from a technological aspect. Also, as far as uh, the ability to create dual power structures in a daily society, um, very few things rival the, uh, the setup power of uh, anarchist dual power organizing. So, no. I don't think that at the least. I do think that um, <laughs> I do think that um, humankind in mass is not ready yet. But there's lots of things we're not ready for. Wait, aren't you, are you ban evading? Anyway. <clears throat> oh, it's in self-promotion. Author consent given before the preface within the text. All right, hang on. Open.
to those who pirated this text i really don't mind especially if you're just checking it out or poor symbolic exchanges if this text proves useful inspirational or impactful then you owe me something though one can never be square in terms of symbolic exchange a thoughtful review on amazon goodreads or similar site would mean the world to me um theory pleb waypoint I like the dedication I'm gonna give this a read tech support I'm gonna give this a read and then I'll, I'll I may talk about it more on air um Anti-fascist is just opposed to fascism. Anarchism is a uh, a theory, practice, and uh, organizational modality, as well as a ideological uh, alignment. So, anti-fascist is just fuck fascists. Uh, anarchism is about a collapsing down of hierarchical power structures, a philosophical challenging of unjust power and authority mechanisms, a replacement of them wherever they may lie. It's a, an entire network of idea, intersecting intersectional ideas that have commentary and interaction on a historical and contemporary basis uh, from civil rights to um, sexual equality suffragettes to indigenous uh, land back rights movements, that sort of thing, to LGBTQ uh, liberation movements to all sorts of things on a global scale. So anarchism is much bigger than anti, uh, than anti-fascism, but anti-fascism is a more targeted thing, right? It is just show me a fascist. I'll fuck that up. Now, anarchists are by definition Antifa, but definitionally set anarchists are anti-fascist. That's just, baseline anarchism. Um, but you don't need to be an anarchist to be an anti-fascist. Hey, Gemma. I know, right? A resolution? Um... uh I do that um you're the closest you'd probably see in your lifetime in the u.s is syndicalism if you think social socialism is not even a lot uh, not even a fucking minuscule shot not in the u.s syndicalism you could get off you you could actually make syndicalism happen in the u.s um a re-democratization of the workplace reordered around the trade union yeah you can make that happen. That's a doable thing. The labor movement is making ground, making gains right now. If we keep the momentum and keep that ball rolling, then there's a possibility there for that one. Um, so something like anarcho-syndicalism or just syndicalism writ large, um, I could see the possibility in our lifetime. Yeah. Socialism? No. I mean, as a technologist and a transhumanist ninja, that that would be my like you know deepest desire and hope that, that that's the direction it happens. Um, <laughs> ideally, we'd like to skip social democracy. I mean, okay, hang on, I'm gonna make a pretty, I'm gonna make a pretty fucking. Un, un, uh, uh, unpopular argument. Give me one sec.
economic and social intervention, social justice within the framework of a liberal democratic polity, capitalist-oriented mixed economy. Okay. Representative and participatory democracy. Regulation of economy. Social welfare provisions. Right? We're a shitty example. You could argue it would be tough to hold your ground. It would be tough to hold your ground. But you could argue that if social democracy were a spectrum, if if the political ideologies and the political classifications are, are spectral in nature, that the U.S. sits at the very shitty end of where it would be instituted. That you're just doing it poorly. It could be argued. It, I'm not sure it would be a successful argument, but you definitely could argue it. So, I'm just saying, it could be argued. The state interventionism, the Keynesian economics, and the, uh, like that's that's your fucking hitch there. Which this that's where I'd fucking I'd 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 go for go for it, but I mean Exel, I I don't even necessarily agree with the argument I'm making but I'm going to I'm going to bring it to the table at least. I don't think any of them exist by the way. I don't think any of them exist. See this is this is where I depart. I think all 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 of the major world governments throughout history to the contemporary they're all are oligarchies. Marcus, in another life, I would have been one of your people. Um, yeah, I, Norway, Britain, Soviet Russia, China now, China then, the U.S., Canada, fucking take your pick. Victorian England, fucking the British Empire, doesn't fucking matter. They're all oligarchies. I mean... Cap capitalism is, it is... It is... Capitalism is a form of oligarchism. It, it's not that capitalism necessitates it. It is, it is that it is it. It's just a form of it. That's all, right? There's there's different iterations of oligarchism. Oligarchism is just like an elite few ruling the masses, right? Like it, it, they could be based around class. They could be race, based around race. They could be based around resource acquisition. They could be ba based around fucking genetic lineage. It doesn't really fucking matter at the end of the day. Oligarchism is the stratification of the power system, the power structure, right? Um, kleptocracy is the, the rich ruling the, the poor, right? The ruling the masses. Um, but kleptocracy is a form of oligarchism. Yeah, but they're all oligarchies, Exel. That's the point. Nobody's escaped it. Only a select few have escaped it. Right? The anarchistic Republic of Kospaya escaped it for 375 years. Very few places have escaped it. Otherwise, they're all oligarchies at the end of the day. Gemma, 
a bunch of them you can. Not all of them, but a bunch of them you can. Um, for sure. I mean, Mayan, Aztec, like, for sure. Yeah. Just because they, you know, yeah. Like, huge swaths of them can be. Yeah, they're not as... That fucking, you know, noble savage shit does, does, doesn't work on me anymore. Like, sorry, they were human just as much as it was. Some of them pulled it off. Some of them pulled it off. But a bunch of them didn't. <laughs> so human's going to human. Um, cat. Um, yeah, that was fucking stupid as shit. Fucking leery. Um, I shouldn't be surprised. I'm with you here, which is why I find myself pretty sympathetic to syndicalism, because I do think there's something to be said around not losing industry and thus independence, or rather the potential for it from the state. Agreed, Kat. Agreed. Um. Oh, wither. Night, Aka. Yeah, Marcus. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's my long running opinion on the matter is that basically 98% of the systems of governance for a certain era onward have all been oligarchical globally. And the era is, it goes back a ways that goes back a long ways. <laughs> I mean, Sumerian kings, after all, right? It goes back a long ways. Oh, you need to do more than that. That. Part of that. You need to do more than that. Honestly, you need to overturn Taft Hartley. You need to uh, you need to introduce legislation that overturns the Supreme Court decision on Citizens United. Um, you need to introduce legislation that re that reverses the course on qualified immunity. Um, you need to un uh, redo the Glass Steagall Act. Um, and there needs to be a nationwide referendum on uh, gerrymandering districts, and there needs to be a formalized, standardized structure, uh, structuring methodology created ideally by, I don't know, cartographers in combination with political scientists and um, computational scientists. So we can get some sort of fair, iterative version of um, election map creation, not a, like, gerrymandered to hell and back version that we have now um also um taft hartley the taft hartley act um aka the labor relations act of 1947 um basically that's what made striking illegal if you didn't know it's basically it's functionally illegal to strike in this country for most things um so it's illegal to do a general strike. It's illegal to do a wildcat strike, which means you have to get approval from union leadership to strike. It's in, it's illegal to do solidarity strikes. And if you think that this is like, oh, fucking uh, look up what happened to the air traffic controllers under the Reagan administration when they attempted to strike. Mm -hmm. When an industry that's critical says, you know what? We're in on it. Mm. All of a sudden, the federal government rolls out the old legislation and fucking cracks down. 
Uh, whether I would just introduce new legislation. <laughs> Sippy, I just need anti sip. Um, jail or forced work in the cases of uh, fucking the air traffic controllers. Slavery. I'm, I'm fucking or or mass firing. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Let me. Re uh, let's see. Um. Yep. On August third, nineteen eighty one, the Professional Air Traffic Controllers Organization (PATCO) union declared a strike. President Reagan considered the strike a peril to national safety and ordered air traffic controllers back to work under the terms of the Taft Hartley Act. They are in violation of the law, and if they do not report for work in forty eight hours, they have forfeit forfeited their jobs, and they will be terminated. Um. When only 1,300 of the nearly 13,000 controllers bothered to show up for work two days later, he followed through with his warning. Um, Let's see. <laughs> Wither. Oh. Uh. Why is that still not processed? Jesus Christ. There it is. Now it's processed. Um, abolition of work by Bob Black. Y'all still playing with him? All right, I'm going to get this uploaded to YouTube. <sighs> or not. There we go. All right, create, upload. This is a standalone, right? Oh, you know what? I'm going to create a theory playlist. Theory. There we go. We'll create a theory playlist for this stuff. Uh, oh, and level. Yeah, that's my favorite. It's my favorite fucking part of the 13th Amendment. It's so fucking brilliant. Except as punishment for crime. It's like, you do realize that by including except, they didn't eliminate they didn't abolish slavery they codified slavery <laughs> they turned it into a constitutional possibility fucking
Abolition of Work by Bob Black. Um, where's the text of the document? There we go. And theory and recorded tonight. Next exercise publish. There we go. Cool. Get that uploaded to YouTube. Um, <laughs> oh, wait, hang on. I wasn't following that conversation. What's Carpe having to do? <laughs> Carpe, I just scrolled back um, and read what you had typed about just trying to maintain. Like, look, I don't, I don't feel you on the the, the, the unhoused front. Admittedly, I've, you know, I've got a cushion there, but the just trying to keep your head above water and fucking treading, just, just treading water and trying to like, you know, just stay above the like, I want off this fucking ride mentality homie i'm right there with you <laughs> right if you ever just want a bitch if you want a good old-fashioned solid bitch session hit me up sometime my man like i'm 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 down for it fuck this fuck that fuck these people fuck those people fuck this fuck yeah no i'm 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 down if you ever just need to vent carpe just l let me know um i'm i'm turning to exercise man like that's that's my thing now like that's my thing i'm just gonna focus on trying to keep this piece of shit body hey non-binary i'm just trying to keep this piece of shit body from like literally falling apart and i'm just gonna you know uh nope there wasn't one uh non-binary there wasn't one so you didn't miss anything um yeah I, I, I'm, I'm of, I'm of the mind now, uh, Kai, the cyborg coming up, dude, telling you, um, control what you can control, right? The things that are within your realm of control, control them and maintain your sanity that way. Otherwise, yeah, non-binary, I'm not doing shit for shit. I'll see my Dom tomorrow night and like. You know, he'll he'll whip the shit out of me. Oh, <gasps> okay. All right. You guys want to fucking. All right. This isn't this is. So this is a thing that I'm trying to do. Right. This is a thing I'm trying to do with my brain. I'm trying to break my brain. Um, So the brain has some pretty intrinsic pain processing. Like modalities for lack of a better term. Right. I'm trying to go full masochist. Like, full masochist. Like, I'm trying to, like, transform how my brain processes pain at a fundamental level. Um, And I got, I think I got a fucking step closer the other night. Like, legit. Um, I was doing my testosterone injection. And, like, I stuck myself, and I guarantee, I hit a fucking nerve. Like I hit a nerve um, and I fucking, I, I like, I stuck myself and I like literally there was no like animalistic reaction, right? My brain said, oh, that hurts. Like that's pain. Like I received the signal. Yes, that's pain. That really fucking hurts. And then I just shove through the nerve all the way to the, like the base of the injection, right? Like to the base of the hypo. And it doesn't let up. It hurts even more at that point. And my brain just goes, yeah, that's more pain. And just finish the injection and take it out. There was no like emotive 
reaction. There was no animalistic reaction. It was purely cognitive that I hear you, I hear you body. That is pain. And that's it. That's all there was. It was, it was like, I legitimately felt like I had tapped a superpower of some sort. Like it, it started, like it was, it was in the category of where I'm like, okay, we're headed in the right direction. If I can take the pain that I, ex I, I have, it's sort of ninja. Yeah. But I'm trying to take it full masochist, right? Like I'm not just trying to like recontextualize the pain or accept the pain. I'm trying to make the pain my bitch. And so if I can do that, then I mean, I'm in constant pain, right? Like that's, Do some Muay Thai, please, and just let the trainer. You can't be punching that much. That'll fast track the shit out of that progression. More pain on the shins means you're doing it right. Cat, if I ever get shit rehabbed to the point, like if I get shit to that point, yeah, I'll do some. I'll do some. I'll do some fighting. I'd be. I would like to know how to fight properly. Kai's martyr arc. Yeah, basically. I'd. Yeah, cat. If I get to that point, give me. Give me another couple of years to get everything fucking rehabbed and strengthened and throw some more muscle on, on the frame. I, uh, we could stream a private Muay Thai session. Um, Hey, I, you know, yeah. Like I, I, I legitimately like that's, that's what I'm doing now is, is trying to reframe it entirely. Yeah, red. Yeah. If if I have constant pain and I can rewire my brain to to read that as pleasure or a source of energy or power, then yeah. I mean, I'm already borderline masochist anyway. So like it's not I don't have to cover as much ground as some people. Some people have to like, you know, that's, that's, they, they don't get it out of the gate, right? Like I'm already halfway there. I'm already most of the way there. I'm, I'm standing right outside the door. Just open the door. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's the latest thing. Oh. Uh, Kairate, <laughs> Kaikata, Kaita. Um, yeah, your resolution. I'm, I'm headed there. Marcus, how can I make chronic illness sexy? Um, I'm just looking to like, I'm uh, okay. So here, this, for those of you that enjoy Dgen story time, I got to tell you, I'm sort of refocusing. Don't worry. I'm still doing all of that. Like I've still got a Dom and I'm still getting fucking like whipped and flogged on a regular basis and shit like that. And it's definitely a part of like this. It's part of the training. Um, but like, I am sort of refocusing, um, Hey Newman, how does the prefrontal cortex work? Please, please explain to me. And why is, why is that a bad idea? In, in, in totality, I, I, I need an explanation from you because the, the inference that I'm receiving from that implication is that you understand how the prefrontal, uh, prefrontal cortex works and why that's a bad idea. So chop chop. Oh, and I'm going to need complete explanations. Yes. Full sentences. Proper grammatical structure as well, by the way. Fair enough, skeptic. <clears throat> Says the amygdala monkey himself. Crooks. Yeah. Yes, with scientific reference papers. Yes, that's that's most assuredly necessary as well. Mm. 
I love that he. Yeah, that is that is an adorable thing. Um, stress is bad for it. Is his his fucking. Hey. <laughs> Marcus. Yes, I can. I am 100% capable of achieving that. Um, so, Newman. Stress. Stress is bad for executive function centered around the prefrontal cortex is processing, right? Stress is bad. So, would being, being in pain 24 hours a day, 7 days a week... Um, that progressively gets worse. Would that be counted as stress? And working on the um, the proposition that it is, that in fact chronic pain is stress, then would the in reinterpretation and re uh, re uh, reclassification of said pain into a more tolerable experience or a more pleasurable experience not to be counted as a reduction of stress please i'll wait as an ex-psych major i can confirm prefrontal cortex does indeed go burr and hey they're passive aggressive welcome um <coughs> yes but please please newman Instruct me more on things you have no understanding or grasp of. I, I can't wait. Why don't you tell me something about information technology or anarchism now, too, while you're talking about things that you have zero knowledge about? Nor does he understand recontextualization. He, he contextualizes that as numbing your feelings. Um, Pookie, boo-boo, sweetheart. I know you're dumb, but I didn't think you were this dumb. You really don't understand what we're talking about, do we? You literally don't grasp it. Like, you, you conceptually do not comprehend what we're talking about. There's literal forms of behavioral therapy centered around this very concept. Are you attempting to discredit CBT as a whole, as a practice? Goddard, bingo, fucking bingo. Uh, skeptic, not not hugely, to be perfectly honest. Um, let's do that. <laughs> hey, pineapple. Um, Jesus Christ, what, what, what? Whatever. Um, Nasbol can't grasp how therapy works. Color me shocked. Oh, right. Shocking. All right. So we read abolitional work. That's going up. That's going to hit the, the fucking, um, new playlist. There's a new playlist called theory. Um, I bet they don't understand uh, consent either. Those those types of people don't ever un understand consent. Um, all right, so I can close that. Oh, well, we got a bunch of headlines down. We got some fucking memes out of the way. Fertus was ever so generous and kind with his his time um and drew something i've had in mind for ages and ages and ages now absolutely adore it um
God, I'd love to talk to this person. But they're already ban evading. I, dude, don't we have to, like, what's the TOS on people we know are doing ban evasions? Do we have to get rid of them? Like, what, does anybody know? Like, what, what, what's required of us? Yeah. I mean, what am I going to do? Discuss a logical or uh, a concept such as high f uh, uh, psychology or political science or basic math with somebody like you, Newman? Uh, you, you're a fucking unironic, racist, fucking Nazbol type, right? Like, we've seen your, your manifestos and screeds on your fucking WordPress site. They're fucking racist as shit. You're dumb as fuck. Your verbiage, grammar, vocabulary, holy shit, man. Those were horrible manifestos. We read them. They're crap. You're a crap, you're a crap person. So what am I going to do? Engage with you seriously? So no, at this point, it's a discussion of, are, wait, do we need to get rid of you? Because frankly, you do, we, we know you're doing a ban evasion. Um, ban evade is TOS, and if we know, we're supposed to report and ban. Okay, cool. All right, well then... That is what it is. Um, Chat message, block, ban evasion, site wide. There we go. Oh. There we go. So I did my I did my um my required TOS bullshit. Iggy Poop, thanks for the follow, by the way. <clears throat> it's the same dude. It's the same Dom I've been seeing for a couple few months now. Skeptic. Yeah. Oh, nonsense. That's not going to happen. Newman will immediately spin up a new account. I mean, it just, Gemma, yeah, that doesn't iterate out. 
our responsibility as streamers, though. Um. Yeah, there's no stated obligation. Um. Oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, the fucking Soviet Russia worked with the uh, Nazis regularly. Like, I mean, that's Molotov-Ribbentrop uh, pact. And um, Stalin was so convinced that Hitler wouldn't betray him that, like, when reports from one of his field agents came in that they were, in fact, uh, uh, like, Operation Barbarossa was a go, um, that they were amassing soldiers on the border Stalin just dismissed it. Um, it was only after an agent confirmed that Japan had attacked, um, intended to attack the U.S. instead of, I forget the original, um, um, the speculative target. Um, he repositioned troops, and that's what prevented the fall. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, fucking Hitler had um, had Stalin sold, basically. Ah, snappy. I get it. I get it. Um, Gemma. Oh, it's in the community guidelines. All right. Uh, in addition, it's prohibited to use your channel to knowingly feature or advertise a suspended user. Um... We understand there may be instances where suspended users may appear on your stream due to circumstances beyond your control, such as through third-party gaming tournaments, but we expect to make a good faith effort to remove them from your broadcast, mute them, or otherwise limit their interactions with your stream. So there you go. Thank you, Gemma. Ninja. Good fucking ninja. Good faith effort. Um... Yep. Thank you, Gemma. Yeah, I want to know what our fucking... What's our exposure on that, right? Um, well, we've already done a fucking read... Dude, I already did a massive reading of theory. We did discussion of headlines. We did discussion of actual, like, anarchist theory. Uh, we did a delve into iterations of anarchist theory versus communism versus syndicalism versus the nature of, uh, like, existing governmental structures and oligarchism. We're winding down, right? Like, we fucking... Dude, I've been going for hours. Like... Maybe I'll keep going, but I mean, dude, fucking not your monkey, right? Sorry you didn't catch it when it was what you wanted, right? Like, it's just the nature of things. I'm on five days a fucking week. We got hundreds of episodes, got plenty of material. Um, You can go read what I've written before. You can go watch what I've said before, but... Say la vie. Um, yeah, we're we're pretty much in the territory at this point. Um, I need to get in proper arm workouts. I need to do some. Um, I need to do some shoulder impingement exercises, um, and then I need to do some proper lifts. Um, Five thirty p.m. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, 5.30 p.m. Pacific, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. 11.30 p.m. Pacific, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, Cricks. Um, sure, why not? That doesn't, get, that doesn't give me any fucking resistance. Um, so it's useless to me. If my dick were that big and weighty, then all right, sure. If anybody has like a 25 pound cock that I can, I can pick up and lift, then by all means. Um...
with that, yeah, I think I'll call it. Um, I got to, um, we're going to raid over to Oink Facts. Um, like I said, I'm going to do some band work and some arm work. I may be on voice chat for some of it. Look, maybe I'll be there. Uh, thank you, Aspen. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'll be around. Either way, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for being here. Thanks for yelling at fucking weirdo, chud, Nazi, Nazbol idiots. Thanks for speaking down towards fucking stupid people that need speaking down to, frankly. Um... <laughs> Wither. Um, yeah. Either way. Let's go say hi to Fax. I don't know what they're up to. I think they might be watching a panel. I'm sorry if they are. Uh, um, either way. <laughs>